You are now listening to the Save Cast, the number one old school RuneScape podcast featuring guests from all across Gelenor. To support this podcast, visit the Patreon link in the description. All right, welcome to the Sebe Cast number 129 with Soup. Soup, how are we doing today? I'm doing fantastic. So happy to be here. Thank you very much for having me on. Oh, it is my pleasure. This uh, long awaited, I feel like. There's just, yes. there, there's so many big content creators, especially in the YouTube scene, that I just mm-hmm. haven't talked to yet. And like, it's a little bit of that intimidation factor, although like as time goes on, I, I kind of don't feel as much pressure, especially after having like Bodhi and sure, yeah. Created. Espe- it's Fo- settled on. Foe was the guy that like just sealed the deal. Like I was good after Foe. Foe, I was so intimidated really? by. Oh my God. That was just uh, was, Foe's scary. Yeah. Foe's scary. But in a good way. We love Foe. Yeah. I love you, Foe, I swear. <laughs> yeah, there's also just so many like big YouTubers these days. Like the scene's just grown massively. Yeah on youtube so i feel like there's you have plenty of people to go through still Mm -hmm. um no shortage in content creators on the scene which is good yeah no it's definitely like nice knowing that and whenever you think there's like like you're done like there's always people springing up so always new people exactly yeah um congrats by the way on i did i had no clue you were you would surpass three hundred thousand youtube subscribers thank you that is thank you incredible man it is a it's a wild number um you know it it's you everybody kind of has an has a number in their head that they're thinking they'll never reach or it's just like you'll see somebody with a number and you're like oh, i'll never hit that but then you know one day it might happen and yeah just really thankful for it it's just it's been a grind but it's cool to see numbers like that in the, in the youtube scene and um we got more people coming a lot of other close guys too to that number which is uh which is really good it's so cool because it's literally old school runescape it's like a game I that know. we thought would have died by now <laughs> i think about this all the time about how how many games have existed and like died, right? The mm-hmm. MMOs, single player games, whatever whatever game you're thinking of, and the YouTube scene dies along with it, right? So to have a game like old school that has only grown in numbers in like the streaming and YouTube space is, I feel like it's a very fortunate situation, right? And we have to enjoy it while we have it, but oh, yeah. it's all because of the, I, what I love about YouTube. You probably talked about this with other people before, but um, with the RuneScape YouTube scene is so many people don't stop playing the game or take breaks, but still watch the content, right? Because mm-hmm. there's so much to watch and people want to keep up to date. So I think that's a big reason for, uh, for you know, the, the numbers on YouTube doing so well. Yeah, and honestly, like that's, also really cool because if you're for this seems to be a recurring problem and like obviously it makes sense where a content creator has just been playing runescape for the past 10 years creating content and they're just like okay i'm kind of not fully engaged in the game anymore but there's so Mm -hmm. much more that you can produce content wise yeah exactly i mean and it's because like you said there's so many people that literally do not even log into this game anymore and continue to watch and they love it so yeah it's it's and runescape is like i don't think it's classified as a sandbox i'm not sure if it is or not but i mean we make it a sandbox right Mm -hmm. we we kind of do what we want in game and with things like the plugins and just all the different unique game modes people come up with like infinite content right you think it's you think there's gonna be no new game mode ideas and no new content ideas it just never stops so yeah, yeah i get giddy thinking about it, it just yeah. excites me every time <laughs> who started all that it, like who's who really started just pushing the game outside the box i want to say probably Bodhi was like the original just with one man army mm-hmm. just kind of setting your own restrictions um yeah i i mean youtube scene's been around for a long time i feel like there's definitely people who Maybe it like came out with a really unique game mode on their own that just never got popular and like just lost to lost to time, right? Those series ideas. But yeah, mm-hmm. Bodie's Bodie's the big guy with his, you know, one man army was fantastic. Uh so good. The Iron Man game mode honestly changed everything. Oh I don't yeah. think people ever like thought about playing in different ways until Iron Man mode came out. I think Hardcore came out alongside Iron or did it? No, Hardcore might have came out a year later. Yeah, I was thinking okay. it was it was almost two years. Or no, no, it was it was, it was it was over two years later. Yeah, because Iron Man really? was twenty fourteen. Oh Hardcore was twenty sixteen. Yeah, that's actually crazy. I've been around for too long. <laughs> um, yeah, but UIM yeah, and, came out with normal Iron Man. Did or, it really? Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's crazy. Twenty fourteen. That was nine years ago. Yeah, I wasn't even I, playing then. Like I played as a child, but I wasn't yeah. into old school until twenty fifteen. So unreal. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. I mean, and now there's just dozens. Of series people come up with that 
are like, wait, I never thought that would be a good yeah. idea, but it <laughs> translates so well, especially under the content creation scene. So yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And of course, we're so blessed to have Runelight. Like I'm uh, when you just look I, at the evolution of plugins, like we went through some rough patches where they I oh, yeah. seriously there was some like some years where they were seriously trying to ban all plugins and that was a it's kind of funny I, I used to make update videos like 2015 2017 18 like between that period i would like cover updates everything about the game um and one of the videos i uploaded was like oh why jagex wants to ban this new like third-party client and it was just me in the thumbnail holding up the runelight logo and in this in the video you can see there's only like 2000 people on the client at the time cuz everybody Holy. everybody was playing like OS buddy like i think conduit was still yeah. a client people were using back then and everybody, i'm like oh this this one's crazy it's open source it's all free and like people make the plugins and everything um, and then within a year i think it becomes like the most popular client which is i'm so happy it did because it changed the game some people will say for the worst but i think majority will say for the better yeah. uh, i I, I, for me, as like a content creator, the tools that it provides are unmatched, um, and it's just helped tremendously. So I owe that client a lot, uh, and I think a lot of people do as well. It's it's just fantastic. Oh, it's amazing. And I remember playing, like when I first started old school, obviously I was playing vanilla for the first little bit, and then I discovered OS Buddy. And mm -hmm. I thought I was getting like the best value ever for just paying like whatever it was, three or four yeah. dollars a month for the pro version. Yep. And just knowing that, like literally, Runelight could cost 20 bucks a month and I would pay for it. I, I I'm not saying don't well. do yeah. it, don't do it, but like <laughs> I would be willing to because it's that powerful and it's that good. Yeah. It's, it's so much quality of life. I mean, if people want to support their Patreon, I think they have a, a Runelight Patreon. So then they are 100% deserving. That and the OSR's wiki are like yeah. just the best things ever. So they, yeah. uh, they deserve all the, all the support they uh, they get. And Adam, the main guy, like I've needed help with certain Runelight stuff and I'll go into mm -hmm. their Discord and I'll just ask for help. And they are so willing They're to so help. so fast. I, I know, like immediately. They're so just, good. I'm like, And the bug fixes this? and everything done like within days. Like yeah. it's just so good. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely it's, love it's it. absolutely incredible. And that's so we, I mean, we see that not only with clients, but just with, the wiki team for example and just mm -hmm. people making dps calculators and spreadsheets and all the, like the community is so passionate about this game it's unreal the and, wiki yeah. is like unmatched i i, I, I think know. i i i it's funny every time i'll go to a different game and try it out for a little bit i always look to see if they have a wiki <laughs> um and nothing compares in the slightest i mean the osr's wiki is top notch i think I was playing Minecraft uh, like a couple of years ago on like the skill spec server mm -hmm. and I'd looked up the Minecraft wiki and even the Minecraft wiki, like the one of the biggest games ever, maybe the biggest game ever, like yeah, I'm not sure ever, literally. like one of the biggest games did not compare to the OSRS wiki. <laughs> like it just, it was not even close. That's crazy. So I, I, and, and the guys who are, who run the wiki, I also, I also asked them questions. I talked to this guy called Cook um, quite often on the OSRS wiki, asking him questions and he just has answers like so quickly on so many things. <sighs> They're some of the most knowledgeable people ever. Um, so much passion, dude. So much passion for things like you said, DPS calcs. Mm. Uh, you know, you know, gear. Uh, you know, best in slot gear, things like that. And then, you know, it's cool because the wiki implements some of those things into the wiki. But then there's also websites like I'm not even sure what the best things are these days for XP tracking. But like Wise Old Man and Temple are like mm -hmm. really good as well, right? That <laughs> the people love that stuff. So yep. yeah, the amount of third party sites out there that that provide you know more information for the game is. Ah, uh, it's just so good. Yeah. Now, I just really love how the whole game and plugins and wiki, just everything has evolved so nicely over the past decade. It's so yeah. cool to see. Yeah, exactly. I really like it. Yeah. It gives you a lot of hope as well just for the future of this game because when you see people that are so insanely passionate, yeah. it's like this can't just go away. Like there's just a fundamental core, just huge player base that will always stick around this game. I I I 100% agree. I people tell me all the time, not all the time, but you'll hear people hear people be like five more years. Old school has five more years. Old school has 10 more years. I'm like why would it be gone in 10 years? Yeah. Like at the rate it's going, <laughs> you know. even if it only has 10,000 players online, that's more than like 90% of the games on the planet. Like having 10,000 mm -hmm. concurrent players, right? I I do not see this game going anywhere. 
um, unless something awful happens, fingers crossed that never happens. But yeah, I, I think with the strong online presence the game has in the content creation scene, and then just how passionate people are about the game itself. Yeah, I 100% agree. It's not going anywhere, yeah. which, uh, yeah, knock on wood, obviously. Yeah, it's it's so cool. And then, of course, we have the content creators, and you're definitely one of those content creators that has brought, oh, stop. Oh my God. brought the community <laughs> together in a way. Like, I just think it's cool. Like, Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Just getting creators involved and almost mm -hmm. just... So it's not just like a solo venture where you're, a, you know, you're a YouTuber and you make your content and you're just isolated. Sure, yeah. Like, no, you're getting, you're getting everybody involved. And I think it's fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. I, I, I love it so much compared to obviously solo content is still fantastic, but it doesn't suit what I prefer to do. Mm -hmm. um, so to have just people be willing to be a part of the group content um, is awesome. And you know how well everybody for the most part, gets along with each other and yeah. how willing everybody is to hang out. And th this is why I'm so sad there's no, there hasn't been a RuneFest in like three years because it's just like you can chat about content and you can talk to each other, even talk to people you haven't talked to ever or talked to in a long time with. And it's just like the best time ever. So it's, for me, what's fun about getting everybody into a call and, and participating in these like challenges and stuff is just to talk to people that you haven't talked to in a long time mm -hmm. and just chat about life and even their content. It's just a nice way to catch up and yeah, make a little fun little uh, video out of it, which is uh, of course people will people enjoy watching. Yeah. Now that's really cool. I know I've literally missed. I started content creation that year, 2019, with, with mm -hmm. like the final Rune Fest. So I didn't go because I was just like still a noob, sort of, you know, like just in that sure, yeah, just baby phase of content creation. I was like, oh, you know, I'll go when I'm, you know, a little bit bigger. And, of course, yeah. Uh, of course, that never happens. So. I think if it happens next year, I think everybody is going to want to go. Like, oh. and, and it better, I, it better happen. I mean, they, I they, know. they said they would, so it better happen. And I think everybody's going to want to go. It has been that long. People it's, are desperate. It's going to be a big, like, if they plan for it well and it actually happens, like, it's going to be an insane event because you yeah. know everybody that's ever gone to a rune fest or everybody that's ever thought of going go. one is going to go yeah hey and if they really want to you know surprise us come out with an na rune fest as well okay make it happen yeah. i know they can i know they can i know so many people would go to it um but that's that's just a dream for now all right yeah. prove me yeah. wrong jagex yeah. prove me wrong <laughs> yeah the, um so have you ever gone to like twitch cons yeah, so I went to my first TwitchCon 2017. Yeah, and then I went for three years straight, and then COVID hit, um, and then you know that all stopped. But I went to three TwitchCons, went to three RuneFests, um, each one better than the last, I think, honestly. They were so fun. I just like interacting with people yeah. who make content, who watch your content. It's just, a, it's just nice to be around people who play RuneScape, right? Like, it is fun just to talk and see it all, like, in person. Um, and Jagex, honestly, RuneFest, they do a great job of it. Uh, and that's what makes me miss it so much is just to be around, you know, that group of people. Yeah. And, um, and see it all happen live in front of you in person and stuff. So yeah, that's yeah. why I'm, 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 I, I'm desperate. I really want it to happen next year. I'm, I'm genuinely going to be mad if it does not happen. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Let's talk about Gilinor Games. Where yes. did this all come from? Like, what, oh, what, man. what inspired the concept? So, I love Survivor. Um, I love a show called The Challenge. Both are competition-based survival shows in the sense that, you know, if you don't perform well, you have the chance to get eliminated. I've always enjoyed competition tournament formats. I love sports in general, right? So there's something really thrilling about teams competing, people competing, and if you lose, you're out, like you're gone, right? So that... Watching Survivor growing up, shows like The Real World, where, you know, there is drama, kind of reality television. Um, I'm not like a huge reality television person, but I like it when it's in that kind of like competition-based format. Mm -hmm. um, and that is like, just think, literally one summer I had, was, was on a bus with my friend Brian, and we were talking about the challenge, which is kind of almost exactly like Dylan our games. Like there, there's challenges, there's eliminations, and, you know, the winner gets a big prize. And I was like, wait, this could translate really well into RuneScape. Like RuneScape has so much potential for coming up with unique challenges. And, you know, the creators are great. The, the voting would be really fun and stuff like that. And then, and then within like a month, I just contacted people. Actually, it's funny. I had, 
I think RuneFest had happened a month after I had that conversation. And at RuneFest, I think it was 2019 or 18, one of the two, I was like, hey, would you guys be interested in being on the show? Like to all the creators who are there. And then like eight of the people who I asked at the RuneFest ended up being on the next season, uh, which is like where it all started. Yeah. And then season one came out um, the next summer and um, that was 2020. Uh, and then we've been doing it, yeah, three years straight ever since. So that's where that's where all of that started. And I'm really happy that it it did well and people enjoyed it. And now it's become something that, you know, it's like my main thing, which yeah. is uh, I think what whatever creator really likes having is that main thing that people like watching. Yeah. No, it's so good. I mean, it truly is like Survivor. I used to, I, I, mean, yeah. I grew up watching Survivor as well. My little brother's obsessed with Survivor. He literally applied to go on Survivor when he was I, 20. I, that's hilarious. I mean, there are so many Survivor fans. That show is so popular. Yeah. So I, I'm not surprised people, you know, who are big fans of it won't, would want to be on. I, I bet you it's so hard to get on that show if you apply. Oh, it <laughs> like, probably it is, is a jackpot yeah. if you get onto that 100%. My main show that I, I prefer watching is The Challenge over Survivor, mm. um, which uh, The Challenge is it's on MTV. It's It's been going on for a long time, too. But okay. yeah, Survivor is still is still probably my second favorite competition show. So. Have you ever watched The Mole? I've seen clips of it. I haven't okay. watched full episodes, oh, but I get recommended The Mole all the time dude. from people who watch GG, and they're like, you should 100% <laughs> watch it. It could be so good. It's I, really I, good. There's like a lot of shows that have come out these days that like, I think there's one called The Circle. There's like The Mole and all these just like, these these shows that are like have manipulation and, yeah. and social and so and like the whole social aspect of everything plays such a big part. It's really interesting to watch. I, yeah. I think it's really fun. Man, yeah, no, that that's just so cool though. And uh, of course, everybody that is in like it, everybody that's played OSRs, I feel like kind of grew up in that mm -hmm. time when Survivor was a big thing, Amazing Race, and all this other yep. stuff. So yeah, yeah, it just it it hits us a little bit differently. I think. 100% yeah and those shows have existed like since we were young right and there, there's obviously thirst for them to come out so they're, they're not going away either mm -hmm. uh, people people love them a lot so yeah it's it's nice to know that it's kind of kind of like kind of like a comfort thing that they're going to be coming out continuously every year always something to look forward to um, I think that's why people can you know become so attached to, to shows like that um, just to you know know they have something to look forward to um, for a show like Survivor or or The Challenge. So what was your favorite season so far of Gilnor Games? Oh, man, I hate playing favorites, <laughs> but I, I think I'd be silly not to say, you know, the, the most recent season is always going to be the best in my eyes. Mm -hmm. In terms of production, like value, I think the third season tops everything, like by far. Um, the second season was unique in the fact that people really started like playing the game for the first time in the second season. Big shout out, of course, Solo Mission for that. Yep. Um, you know, people started you know aligning and manipulating a little bit and, and doing all that and then in the third season you know everybody's playing the game and there's all this you know behind the scenes stuff going on and i i was just so thankful that everybody on the show was willing to you know put in the extra effort to have their unique characters and and make it truly like a reality show and i think it really it really nailed it on the third season so yeah, I I'm, I think third season for me is the answer, 100%. Okay. How much pressure is there for season four, just knowing, like, you do have... Oh, my gosh. You kind of have to, like, one-up, you know, the, the past seasons in a way. It's... Yeah, it's... It's, like, it's it's weird because I don't feel pressure in a bad way. Um, More just... I feel pressure to come out with the show as soon as possible, but I want to, of course, make it better than the last and you know, obviously quality takes time. Um, so if I do want to improve on the fourth season over the third, then it's just going to take a while. Um, but it's just every time I come out with an episode of GG, just seeing the reactions and the comments of people being like, oh, this is awesome. This is so cool. It's like so motivating. Um, so it makes me want to rush into the next season as soon as possible and come out with it. But I, if I do that, then I become so stressed. <laughs> so I, it's, I literally just have to like sit myself down and be like, okay, don't worry. It'll come out eventually. Just make sure, you know, you take your time with it. So many comments though on the fourth season, I, I get comments every day about yeah. it. Um, oh. and it's, I just have to tell people it's coming, I swear, but it's going to take a little time. I promise. So obviously so many hours go into this. Like what is like mm -hmm. your... What is the time span of a season of Gilinor Games in like, you know, months? And then sure. how, like, how much time are you spending per day working? 
Yeah, so Gigi is like it's a daily thing once things start. So last uh, season we start we started filming February twenty second, um, two thousand twenty two, and the final episode of the last season came out February twenty twenty three. So it was a, one entire year to start from start to finish coming out with the third season. Damn, um, which is obviously a long time. I would say six months of that uh, is usually just filming everything like filming episodes one to 12 and then six months of that is also just editing uh the post-production takes up just a long time uh as as you guys can probably imagine um so yeah it's a long it's a long long process especially because one thing that um is really tricky is we're not all in like the same house right we're not all in mm -hmm. the same area so scheduling people to be on at the same time who live in australia you know, Europe, America, um, trying to find one day and one time during that day that works for everybody. Uh, when you have, let's say, 18 to 20 people on the show at that point is like the hardest thing ever. Um, so, yeah, that's why usually the first like four or five episodes take two to three months just to get those in just because of how long it takes to, to get everybody together. Um, things quicken up a little bit once people are eliminated and schedules yeah. open up a little bit. But, yeah, that's that's definitely the hardest part. I would say... Yeah, I'll pre I would say each season is around a year of, of prep time and planning until, uh, you know, the final episode comes out. Sheesh. Yeah, it's long. It's long. Do you, uh, so, like, just, I just wonder because obviously, like, the, the, the creators I've talked to that have talked about sponsorships and um, just how YouTube monetizes videos, like, season one must not have been <laughs> the greatest in terms of, like, getting the exposure and getting just mm -hmm. all the sponsorships and everything ready to go. So like, did you ever f at any point in these past three seasons, have you felt like the amount of time you're putting in is not worth it? Um, you know, season one, looking back, I mean, Gilner games kind of, I would say second, like it was the secondary, like kind of big boost I had on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Um, so when the, when that first episode of season one came out, um, I got viewership I had never really had before. So to me at the time, I was like, oh my God, this is always going to be worth it if I can get views like this. Um, and luckily with how the sponsorships works for work for the episode, like sponsors aren't locked in until usually I would say three weeks, maybe before an episode comes out. Mm -hmm. So if I'm on like episode eight of the season, we're still trying to lock in sometimes sponsors for, you know, episodes, I don't know, 11 and 12 or something. And at that point, the sponsors have seen the views of, let's say, you know, episodes one through seven. So we're not like kind of locking in rates of viewership that would be lower than I would get actually during the season. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it's, it's improved every single season, right? Uh, it's definitely gotten better and better since the views have gotten better and better. Now, sometimes I, I do think like, man, is it worth like this 18 hour day? I, I think <laughs> I I had never pulled an all nighter in college ever. All four years didn't pull an all nighter. This past season of GG, I pulled five all nighters to get episodes <laughs> out because I like I usually never I love sleep. I need to get my sleep every yeah. day. But for I felt I don't know why, but for GG, I just felt this like I did not want to let anybody down with coming yeah. out late with coming out late with an episode. So I was like okay, I have to stay up all night to finish this. And sometimes at 5 a.m., I was just sitting there, episodes not finished yet, and I'm like, man, is this worth it? <laughs> like, oh, my God, I feel terrible. <laughs> but then, you know, four four hours later, I finally get the episode done, and then, you know, I see the audience reaction, yep, and yep. I'm just like, that was so worth it. Um, oh, yeah. I, I'm always going to say it's worth it. I'm never going to say it's not worth it um, for, for what the show has done for my channel. And... Um, just like the community it's kind of built around it so yeah I'll, I'll always say it's worth it one of the coolest things as well is like you've created like a timeless product now as well like we can go back like imagine you know if gilinor games continues for the next mm -hmm. seven seasons you got 10 different seasons of gilinor games and people are just discovering it on you know season 10 you can go yeah. back and you just have these timeless classics yeah, that, I talk oh, about okay. this. Um, I was gonna I talked about this with Settled. I think he actually mentioned it in your in your episode with him, where it's really important for a YouTuber, um, I guess a streamer to an extent too, but especially YouTuber to kind of build a catalog of content for people to go back and watch when mm -hmm. they discover your channel. So exactly like you said, if somebody discovers GG in let's say season four or five, 
they can go back and they have like 30 videos of previous yeah. seasons to watch through. So that's why it's really important, uh, I think, to to have that catalog of series, of, of episodes of, a, sh of, of a, a show you come out with or a series you come out with where people are like, I can go back and watch this. Uh, in the, in through you know throughout its entirety of however long it lasted, um, so yeah, that's the that most that's the most exciting thing. It's kind of like building at season to season. It's like okay, I finished three seasons now. When the fourth season starts and people discover that, they can go back and watch the first three, mm -hmm. which I think is really important. And um, yeah, it just it just helps build your channel in general. So, hundred percent agree. Uh, speaking of settled, I'm just gonna jump into the Twitter topics real quick because he love does the guy. Have, yeah, now absolutely amazing person. Um, he asks, what are your main aspirations as a content creator? Do you have any ultimate goal? Do you see yourself pursuing something other than Gilinor Games? Or is this your core project slash focus for the foreseeable future? Also, I love you. Also, I love you. Right back at you, Settled. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, great question. Obviously, for me right now, I I think I'm hitting a good, like, n like kind of niche in the community of group like content where it's it's kind of like kind of like Gilinor games like I invite people on and the entire con like video I come out with or show I come out with just involves a group of people in the community as opposed to me running a solo series by myself mm -hmm. um so I think like for the future I, I want to continue doing that kind of content and just improving on it it's it, it's kind of interesting the first few seasons of GG I kind of wanted to replicate like cable television like i wanted to and network television like i wanted to produce the episodes exactly like they would be on a tv show and then in the third season and, and even for the fourth season now i'm kind of thinking out not that that was a mistake but i need to actually be tailoring it more to the youtube algorithm as opposed to like a network algorithm or mm. a network tv show because well just because something is popular on tv doesn't mean it's going to do well on youtube so and you know knowing the tricks and how YouTube works, I think it's really important to include aspects of shows that are popular on like streaming <laughs> platforms and, and TV, but also copy people who are very success successful on YouTube. Like look at people like Mr. Beast and some of the biggest guys and see what they do. Try to implement that in your content as well. And so that's what I want to improve on for the future is just keep trying to tailor it um, and improve on on my own, you know, editing quality, production quality. And I'm gonna, definitely going to stay in the RuneScape scene as long as I can. I, I don't see myself like branching out to anything else, um, especially with well how much YouTube and RuneScape has grown over the past few years. So I have, yeah, zero doubts that I will be going anywhere. Um, or zero doubts I'll be leaving. So yeah, definitely um, foreseeable future, staying RuneScape. I want to just continue improving on the quality of everything. Um, every year it seems like new tools come out that help people improve like video content creation aspects um which is really exciting there's this new website called osrs.world that just came out uh recently and it literally lets you fly through the entire map um without actually being in game and everything loads like all the npcs are in the game Holy. you can keyframe different movements around the map it looks so 100 percent. check it out if you guys haven't already it looks amazing so that already unlocks like a whole new possibility for like cinematic and b-roll footage and stuff like that so yeah just seeing seeing things like that come out makes me just want to continue to improve improve editing wise and mm -hmm. and production wise so yeah continue improving on production editing and um yeah just trying to get better every day 100 percent. hell yeah i think i've said 100 percent a couple times now but i just like saying 100 percent. so <laughs> uh so you mentioned, you know, like there obviously is a YouTube game where, you know, you have to kind of stay in the <clears throat> like the cutting edge of, you know, what's mm -hmm. hitting. Well, if you want your, you know, if you want your content to do like the best it can. So what are some tips and stuff that you've seen from other huge creators that like you're trying to implement? Is there any that come to mind that you're just like, I like I want to start implementing this? Yeah, that's it's tricky because. Um, what I think, what I think makes YouTube RuneScape YouTube, and I think there's, I think Ru there's the Rust YouTube scene does a really good job of this too, is like when you watch somebody's video, you know it was edited by that creator, right? Like you know, settled edits his own videos, you know, Solo Mission Framed, and Jimmy, you know, when you watch their videos, like it's edited by them. Yep. Whereas a lot of like the big big YouTube guys have a team editing their videos, or they have um, you know, a similar style of editing because you know it's edited by 
uh, a guy who edits like some edits you know for somebody else as well so it's it's interesting because i i, I really like how dedicated the runescape youtube scene is to like producing and editing their own videos um so for me one tip I had seen somebody give is like try to have somebody edit for you so you can make more content, come out with more videos. But I, like I'm actually like on the other end of that. I think I personally think it's the best idea to edit your own videos and try to get as good as you can and learning editing and and kind of coming up with you know your own unique twist on things. Mm -hmm. So people when people watch a video, they know it's yours. Yeah. Um. So there's that. But there is also things. Uh. You know, tips of. Um. You know, one thing I've I've been trying to do recently is like. Get to the point of your video as soon as you can, right? Don't don't draw out your video as in the beginning. Like try to you know have like between zero and 25, 30 seconds of your, of the intro of your video be like you know talk about what your video is going to be about. Um, don't make it too long. You know, get to the point with what you want to do, and then boom, get into the content, right? Because that's kind of what the YouTube algorithm likes. You don't you want YouTube algorithm is all about audience retention, right? You want to keep people watching your videos as long as possible. Yep. So if you do things, if you get into things quickly and get to the content, get it into, you know, into what people want to see right away, then you know that's going to benefit your videos. So that you know definitely concise precise videos like it's okay to have long videos i mean every gg video is like an hour long like it's it's okay to have long videos and and draw things out right but i would say like at the start of the videos is the best time to to try to draw people in and keep people watching yep um and then the other thing of course everybody can relate to this i'm sure you too you can too is just you know consistency like coming out with videos or streaming you know i wouldn't say as much as you can i don't think it's healthy to do it you know all the time every single day but Definitely consistent breaks. It stinks. It, it really is one of the worst parts about being part of like the streaming and content creation world. But, you know, it's like you every time you, you take a break, you feel like you're missing out on a stream or coming out with a video and you see somebody else streaming, you see somebody else coming out with a video and you're like, oh, that should be me right now. Um, that takes a long time to to like kind of try to get out of your head of yeah. I always need to be online. I can't be missing any days and stuff like that. That's one of the hardest things uh, to try to get around. But it is important, like 100% consistency um, is is definitely one of the most important aspects of of growing on any platform. Um, but it is, of course, important to, you know, know when to take a break, have a day or two off every single week to, to care about yourself, uh, which is which is really important. Um, that's actually one of the biggest things for me is I could make like Gilinor Games a full time job. Like if I if all I were to do is come out with Gilinor Games episodes, mm -hmm. I would do it. But I can't, uh, you know, because I, I can't just take like a, a nine month break from making videos on my YouTube channel <laughs> and then come out with Gilinar Games, right? It's yeah. just, I, I, it, I feel like that's just detrimental to the mm -hmm. channel. So to that's kind of, the, it's one of the harder things about it is like I'm, I'm kind of producing and editing Gilinar Games alongside producing and editing like other series that I have going on on my channel. Yep. Um, so it's kind of like a double, you know, it's it's kind of like working two, two jobs at once. But... It's it helps when you love what you do, right? And I really love doing it, and I'm so happy I'm not doing anything else. So yeah, it's uh, a lot, a lot. I'm not even sure what the original question was. I was just talking yeah. for a little bit uh, there, yeah. but I, I, it's. I just think it's cool that like if you could, it would be all going or games. But honestly, I think the breaks here and there to just create other content that you just have ideas for, like absolutely your, your latest video where it literally felt like a mini, like just a mini episode yeah. of going or games. It's like that was fun. Yeah, and, that and that was so fun to do. Do you ever feel like this is what I would feel if I was in that position? I'd feel like this OC, just this random OCD that like, oh, this could have been a Gilinor Games type thing, but now I'm just mm -hmm. having it be a standalone thing. Do you ever feel that way, or can you just appreciate coming up with something that's just fresh and fun, just for the sake of it? Yeah, well, of course. I mean, as fun as Gilinor Games is, like. It's obviously it takes a lot of work. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I've already talked about this. It, you know, one episode will take you know months of of planning, or one or two episodes months of planning and editing and all that stuff. But for example, for that mini GG episode I came out with, the One Remains episode, mm -hmm. like I was able to schedule everybody to be the, on, on schedule everybody to be online, um, edit the video and get it out within a week. Like it was that fast. Like yeah, it was quick awesome. challenges. It was it was no no confessionals in the video, but everything was done really quickly. So to have a video like that. People like it. It does really well. And then thinking about how I can come out with more series like that, where it's there's obviously like a thirst, not a thirst, but people 
would like to see more content like that. So it's like a relief almost, right? Like, yeah. I, I think I think you can ask a lot of YouTubers. Like one of the worst moments is if you come out with a new series and you look at your YouTube app and it says like your video is ranked 10 out of 10 in oh, views. It's, yeah. like, it's like doing horribly <laughs> and you're like it is an awful feeling like I feel like it should be illegal for YouTube to do that because it just puts you into this downward spiral. Um, so it's a mega relief to have a video come out and yeah. do well. Um, and yeah, like like you're saying, like it's it's there there will always be a part of me that's like, man, I wish this was a GG episode and coming out with. Yeah. But um, I think a lot of people do appreciate, you know, series alongside GG that also, you know, are are do well, are different, right? Because if everything was like GG, maybe it would get boring. I don't mm -hmm. want to overdo it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's good to have it as like kind of like a once a year type deal. Um, it's unique in that time of the year and then have, have other content come alongside it. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's got, that is the probably most stressful thing about YouTube specifically is just uploading a video. You have these expectations and it just yeah. flops and it's like, it's over for it, me. Man. Like the, the, the career is over. <laughs> Dude, I, 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 it's so true. And the, the, one of the worst things is sometimes you just don't know why, because you'll have a video you come out with one day that maybe you didn't put that much work into compared to your last one or you think might do mm -hmm. poorly and then you look at your youtube and it's like the best boring video like in months and you're like you're telling me that this video that you know i didn't think would do well is number one and then a video <laughs> i thought would do well is number 10 like it makes no sense to me yeah. we are all you know the youtube guides you know we just have to bow down to them and hope that they treat us well sometimes <laughs> um but yeah the one thing i have you know learned and realized throughout the years though is that if if a, if a video, if, if you put the time and, and, and put the effort into making a video as, as good as possible, like quality, YouTube will eventually promote that video. Like if it is really good, if people are watching it, um, if people like it, if people support it, it will eventually do well. It might not at first, um, but YouTube will pick it up. There's there's cases where it doesn't. For the most part, if it's a really good quality video, YouTube will will, will, uh, will promote it in some mm -hmm. sense. So don't give up <laughs> if your video isn't doing great. There's there's always a chance it could it could still do well. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. <clears throat> um, so how many times in your YouTube career, you've been doing YouTube for over a decade, Oh my right? gosh, yeah, uh, 13 years now, yeah. Jeez. Qu quite a while. That is so crazy. Like 13 years, man. Wait, yeah, so dude, how old are you yeah. right now? I'm 28, yeah, I started okay. when, I was, when I was 14. Wow. Yeah, it's dude. I've been around so long in the RuneScape YouTube scene that I forgot things I did when I first started. Like I don't, I don't like the 2010-11 era. Like I remember some things about it, but I don't remember a lot. I tell you, that's how old I feel and how long I've been around. Um, but it's 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 cool to have the perspective of seeing the YouTube game change throughout the years, right? So yeah. it's and I would I would say right now we're we're at the the best time ever. I mean some some of the early days like the 2009 to 2011 era were really fun too but this right now is is by far the best time yeah that's so cool so when, at what yeah. point in your youtube career of 13 years did were, were you able to start doing it full time so i started 2010 i actually started in my um in a dorm room uh, in like a summer camp uh when i was like 14 oh, <laughs> i wow. made my first video yeah it was a long time on some cheap laptop i uh i had just started I started playing RuneScape in 2008. I'm not one of those like 2001, 2002 players. So, mm -hmm. I mean, 2008 is still a long time ago, but mm -hmm. I know some people like to flaunt the fact they started way earlier than that. <laughs> um, but I was a 2008 guy. Um, and then I started making some videos and some did well. Like I had, I had, I think I probably had about 200 pre-EOC videos before Old School came out. Actually, probably even more, like three, 400. It was kind of funny, actually, the, two, the 2000, 10 to 2013 before old school runescape came into the game like it was a whole different like youtube landscape i remember because that, that's when i met framed um and like goody ronin unreal's rs those guys i made mm -hmm. videos with all them back in the day and we would just pump out videos daily like we would gear up for a rev cave trip go and get like two hours worth of footage and then come out with like a 40 minute video like no editing <laughs> just like maybe some cuts here and there but we just like would Love it. post post our rev cave adventures right those and those did okay like there were some cool ideas i had a a decent series that did okay back in the day that uh i, I dressed up as a green dragon bot and mm -hmm. but i was scald and i had people you know people thought i was a bot 
So it was called like Green Dragon Trollbotting. It was the series name back in the day. <laughs> and I had PKers attacking me and then I would switch up. I had claws on me and I'd try to kill them and stuff like that. Uh, so that was like my first like decent series, which is fun to think back on. It's still one of my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, but then old school came to the game, right? 2013, February. Um, and I decided to make the big decision, um, which still sticks to me with this day, is, is making quest guides for the game. Um, and at the time, no regrets, right? Those things did so well. I remember I got my first like decent sized YouTube paycheck the first like two months in the old school RuneScape. Mm-hmm. At the time, I wasn't thinking this is a full time thing, but I was like, wow, like this could be a decent side hustle, right? That, that this isn't too bad whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, and then I just consistently stuck with it since. And it became like officially a full time thing after I graduated college, uh, 2017. But yeah, I would say when Old School RuneScape came out, that's when I first had the idea in my head where it's like, okay, well, I can actually, I can maybe, maybe potentially make something out of this, which is yeah. uh, crazy to think about 10 years ago absolutely crazy what did your what did your parents think like did, did they ever think your youtube youtubing was oh my silly? gosh it's i was always terrified to tell my dad especially that i was doing youtube like that i was making videos because my dad was never a big video game fan in general mm-hmm. um i actually it's kind of funny the first ever like console i had back in the day was a wii like a nintendo wii was my first <laughs> console like that that just shows you how late i got yeah. into the game um but we always had a pc in the house right so i always i grew up on like pc games um and eventually discovered runescape through that um but my dad was very strict like one hour computer time i think a lot yeah. of people can relate to that yeah. right like you're one hour computer time and then you're outside or you're reading books you're doing i actually got away with it sometimes where i said i was playing an educational game i told my dad that age of empires was an educational game <laughs> because there was like you learned about civilization yeah hey, and to be fair you do learn a little bit about civilizations on that game but it was mainly just like a slaughter fest on that game right <laughs> it was just fun in general but eventually i waited until that first youtube paycheck to be like hey dad like check this out i made a little money making videos online and his response was literally just like hey if you're making money like go for it (laughs) like that's awesome right not the response i I expected whatsoever but eventually uh, i think they came to appreciate the fact that i was doing it because if you are kind of doing your own thing making your own money working from home you become way more flexible uh with like time you can take off and and spending time with family and stuff like that so I think they they ended up appreciating it and yeah big supporters ever since which is uh which is awesome that's cool and you did go to all of college were, were you planning on yeah. finishing college like was that just like always the plan yeah um my parents would have never let me drop out of college to, <laughs> to go full-time creation yeah no really? i uh, no yeah there's no way like i they they are 100 percent wanted me to get the degree and a part of me also was just like because at the time i didn't think youtube would ever be like a full-time thing for me okay like i was it was an it was an inkling in my head that it might be but i was like i need to get this degree like kind of as a safety net right just like i need to get it let me just say i have it looking back i i don't think i would have changed it honestly like i'm still i'm still happy i got it that's good um but looking back, I would have done things differently with like, you know, student loans and all of that stuff. I would have changed that. I changed all yeah. of that, how I did it. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I got the degree. And then it's right after I, I got, I like made a video. I'm like, hey guys, I'm going full time on my YouTube channel. So it was, uh, it was 2017 right after that, where I, I went hardcore on everything. That's so cool. It's, it's just, yeah. it's cool hearing about like the success stories that were like, you know, that actually were successes. Like obviously there's so many people that enter into content creation and, you know, not everyone makes it because there is just, you know, like you do have to create good content consistently. Yeah. Um, Yeah, definitely. But yeah. So what are, what is like the biggest blessing for you being a full-time YouTuber besides just like free time? Hmm. Biggest blessing. Yeah. I mean, just being very flexible, like, being your own boss is really nice because, well, there, there's downsides and upsides to it, but you mm-hmm. ask for blessings. So I'll we'll, we'll go, we'll go with the good ones. Um, yeah, for me, the biggest thing is just flexibility, being able to work around a lot of different things. Um, and then just uh, the connections and networking I'm, I'm able to do uh, with, uh, with doing what I do is, is a big blessing. Like I've, I've met so many people and, and made so many connections. Uh, through this that I think it's it's going to be a good like platform for the future if something with YouTube ever doesn't work out uh, so that's always really nice um, yeah I can't really think any more off the top of my head I'm sure there's plenty of more I'm not thinking of but 
Yeah. What was the biggest hurdle, would you say, in the 13 years that you had to overcome? Sure. Yeah. Well, there's like, there's a lot of different, I've had a lot of memes about myself over the years in the RuneScape YouTube scene. Um, and to be honest with you, I, I think it's a good thing if people know you for a certain thing, unless it's something really bad. But <laughs> for me, like yeah, I was the quest, I was the quest guide guy for man, 2013, 2019, like seven years. Mm -hmm. Like if people heard the name soup or soup RS or third age film or super hero, I've had a lot of names. Mm -hmm. They're like, Oh, like I make shitty quest guides, right? Like I, I make terrible quest guides. Um, and yeah, do not disagree whatsoever. Like I love memeing about the quest guides these days. Like at the time it was really funny. Um, but yo, they helped grow my channel, right? I have yeah. no regrets making them. They, they, the views they got, like how well they did. Like I, I really have no regrets making them. They helped build a, a viewer base for me at the very start of old school. So no regrets whatsoever, but you know, there, that it, everybody will have something if they get memed about or, you know, a meme about them will, you know, it'll occasionally hurt here and there. So it's kind of funny though, because you know, I, I'll, I'll see stories about people who say they watch my quest guides. They're like, Soup never told us to bring a stamina potion once in any of the guides. It's like, well, all my guides came out before stamina potions even existed. Like, how am I supposed to go out with this? How am I supposed to recommend stamina potions if stamina potions weren't even a thing? Um, but looking back at all that, like, it just makes me laugh every time. Um, That's a good And then, yeah, and then I also had a, an incident um, on the RuneScape live stream. Do you know about that? The... Uh, the I love the pussy when yeah, I streamed. Oh that yeah, on I mean, yeah. Every, everybody knows of that. Yeah, yeah. So that happened to me too. <laughs> and then I was like, oh man, another meme about myself. Yeah. That's not good, right? Just, <laughs> just interrupting the official RuneScape stream and just like I thought it was over for me after that point. I literally was laying on my my bedroom floor uh, thinking Jagex would never talk to me again, and oh, all the Jmods no. hate me. And I was like, it's over, dude. And I remember Ronan after all that happened because it was Mod Ronan, and Mod Merchant in the call. I remember he pulled me into a Discord conversation afterward or a Discord call after and he goes, Stefan, that was hilarious. Like he, he started <laughs> off with everything being super serious. Not that oh, he was so good. mad at me, but then he, him and Merchant were just laughing uh, the entire time. And I was like, oh, thank God. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah, so that was the other thing. Um, yeah, and then, but luckily, Gil and Our Games came out 2020 and, and that changed, I think, a lot of like the... The reputation I had, mm -hmm. um, and and changed a lot of people's you know perspectives of of my channel and stuff like that. So it was, I mean, it literally was seven years of I would say people being like he's on the the lower tier of content creators to finally having that thing come out mm. where people were like, oh, like this guy, like yeah, he actually can make some good stuff. So it was a long time until I feel like I finally earned a lot of people's respect. That's uh, that's so, cool yeah. though, like that that can change because I feel like a lot of people like. I mean, this is, I feel like for you, you, I mean, you are you, so you're seeing everything centered toward you where it's like, you see yeah. all the negativity and it's just like, man, like wh this sucks. But for the average player, like in the average person that views your content, like, yeah, there's memes and stuff, but it's like, nobody actually has that big of like a, a concern with anybody's reputation generally, unless it's True. like actually horrible. Most yeah. people just meme it off. And that's what I have to remember as well. It's like people are just memeing. Like they they have their own lives that we're about. Like they don't really care, to be honest. Yes. But yeah. there is something to be said about like rebranding and kind of just creating a new reputation. And the cool thing is that it is possible, but it takes work. Yeah. And for sure, you're definitely seen as like S tier content creator now, which is really cool to see. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it everybody can do it you know it can take a long time um but you're you're so right like you think about people like you think about things a lot more than your viewers will right yeah. like yeah. It, however you can when people joke about like a meme about yourself or they're just 99% of the time they're just joking having fun like they don't hate yeah. you yeah. they don't actually like think you're terrible they're just joking they're having fun they're trying to talk to you and, and if they just talk via memes or right it's uh that's just one way they they talk yeah it's funny when you start you know youtube and you just get like one negative comment and it just sits with you for some odd yeah. reason it's like you can't get over just one negative thing about you but yeah. like the more you do it you just realize like not everyone's going to like you and not everyone's gonna enjoy your content and they'll make it known that they don't enjoy your content instead of just watching yeah. something else so you just yeah. deal with it over time exactly you get better at dealing with it um and it, it's 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 a it's a good thing to have like 
you think it, it's not necessarily a good thing to think about it all the time, but if it makes you want to improve, then yeah, that, that's definitely a good thing to think yeah. about. There's that. And it's also just like, it, like, I, I hate to even use this term, but it's like, it kind of like builds character in a way sure. where yeah. you kind of build a thicker skin just over time. I, like, it's so, it's so scary, like starting, especially streaming. Like starting mm -hmm. streaming where like you don't want to ban anybody. You just want to have a good time. You just want to meet yeah. all these people. And then you get somebody that's just absolutely toxic. And you have to like deal with people and then, you know, YouTube comments as well. And people thinking negatively on, you know, Twitter or whatever of you. And it's like yeah. you just got to accept that you are now in a public space on the Internet. And you just deal yes. with it. So, yeah, it's funny. Um just seeing people like Bodhi, it will be like, just throw out 10 day bands of people in yeah. his chat, like within, <laughs> within seconds where it's like, even think about it anymore. Whereas some people are like, should I ban this guy? Like, oh, he's really, he's a little bit mean to me. <laughs> it's funny seeing both sides of it. Yeah, no, for sure. So you used to stream. Um, yeah. Yeah. How was that for you? So actually I, I wanted to make streaming my full-time thing after college. I, I had decided because like my YouTube wasn't fantastic at the time mm. um but my stream was doing okay so i'm like okay i'm gonna just do full-time streaming i tried that for like a year um and i just i couldn't do it anymore after a year like the the, the daily streaming grind that i tried getting into i am not good at the game in general <laughs> so like i'm okay um but i wouldn't say i'm amazing at the game i just found myself enjoying the production and editing side of things way more mm. um so when I decided to make the switch to YouTube again. I just enjoyed it way more. Um, I think there's just much better streamers out there who are doing what I was doing. Uh, and I think it's just like some, some like Twitch and YouTube, like people just prefer different platforms. Like I think those platforms are made for certain people. Um, there are some people who enjoy streaming more. Some people would never touch YouTube, but like streaming. And there's some people who would never touch streaming, but love YouTube. Yeah. Um, but the nice thing is that you can still connect with both. Like you can still, one of the hardest things ever is doing both, right? If you're able to consistently stream and consistently upload videos, like that's really impressive. That's why I think people like Mammal who consistently stream and consistently comes out mm -hmm. with his videos, really, really impressive. Um, but yeah, the streaming was fun. At the time when I started the full-time streaming, I was doing a hardcore Iron Man, and I had for some reason come up with a rivalry with Alkin where I was like, oh, Alkin, yeah, Alkin and I are going to try to race for total levels and race to, for achievements on an Iron Man. Who was I to try to <laughs> go against Alkin of all people for, like, racing to max an account and, like, go for achievements? I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, but it was fun having that little back and forth with him uh, <laughs> when, uh, when that was going on. But, yeah, there's just no way I was ever going to beat him. Um, but it was fun, like... There's definitely things I like about streaming. I love the chat interaction. I love seeing the same people come into your stream every day. I think you definitely build better connections with your viewers if you are a streamer because you're seeing names and you're yeah. seeing people consistently come back. You're seeing people you know, talk about their life and you, you can talk with them. YouTube comments are a bit different. You never know what's going to come in in a YouTube content, uh, <laughs> comment. So yeah, they can, be, they can be a bit different. Yeah. Um, I think both, both have their you know, positives and negatives. Um, but yeah. Twitch streaming was about a year and a half, and then after that, it was it was just back to YouTube pretty much. Okay, so you didn't like just start going part time on Twitch or anything. It was just like all or nothing kind of for you. Yeah, it was like I was still uploading YouTube videos, but it was like hardcore man progress videos like once a month, um, and then it was like YouTube or Twitch streams like five six times a week uh, throughout the throughout the month. Um, yeah, so that was pretty much it. And then I I actually the the biggest kick for me was when I I lost my hardcore status on stream. And I was like, I don't think I want to stream as an Iron Man, to be honest with you. And then I made the switch to, to YouTube and started doing videos on there and everything. So that uh, dying on the hardcore is actually maybe the best thing that's ever happened to me. So it was, it was a good thing. That's good. Uh, yeah, because I, I do remember popping into your stream. There, there's definitely been like solo missions, one of them as well, that like had his phase of streaming. And then he realized like he just enjoys YouTube more. Sure. Um, yeah. I feel like. I don't know. Obviously, like you said, like everyone's different. Um, mm -hmm. When I was a streamer, a hundred percent, when I first started content creation, and then I just started doing YouTube just for fun. It's just like okay, mm -hmm. like I'll just do it on the side because why not just branch out a little bit? And then you know, obviously, initially it was just rambles or I'm just talking. Like I wanted to just make my content very simple, nothing where I have to like stress out about it. 
because I'm not like, it's not about like editing and creativity yeah. mostly for me. It's just about, you know, talking. Yeah. Um, and that kind of just worked out really nicely just over time and then starting the podcast. But there, yeah, like, I don't know. It's, it's interesting because I feel like as soon as YouTube started doing better for me, I stopped, like, I don't know. I, I think I started seeing more of like, not really the negatives, but just the things I didn't like as much on Twitch. And mm -hmm. so it kind of like brought me a little bit further back away from Twitch, which is just interesting how that kind of happens. Like as soon as YouTube starts doing a little bit better, it just feels like, okay, I kind of want to like dig into that. Uh, yeah. I, I, and that's probably just me just enjoying the concept of uploading and then getting to relax, not just yeah. a daily grind. It's it's like it's not easy being live for like four to eight hours like every day. I mean, people will say it's easy, but if you have consistent chat interaction and you're trying to be entertaining on your stream, I mean, it can it can exhaust you. Like I remember being tired, quite tired after doing four to five hour streams back in the day. So for people who are able to pull out consistent, you know, eight plus every day, like Curtis yeah. MMORPG is like and Foe, Crazy. those guys are just they are the definition of streaming consistency. Um and uh, it's it's just mega impressive. So, yeah, there that's that's one of the other things where I'm just like I just couldn't do that every day. I like yeah. having a bit of relaxation time to edit. Like I like doing more of the behind the scenes work as opposed to mm -hmm. being the, the face on the camera. So, yeah, it, I, I'm I'm with you. It it's also like with streaming for me, what I realize is like I have to fully enjoy this. Like I have yeah. to fully like be comfortable where where my stream is, the state of my stream, like. I feel like as soon as there's pressure about like I have to make a certain amount of money or like I have to, you know, stream for this long or I have to do this piece of content because I think my viewers will want it. It's like as soon as there's like these external pressures that are yeah. just pushing in on you to stream, it's like it the fun gets taken away, which is so unfortunate because that's yeah. what I started realizing as well. It's like I am so anxious going live right now and I don't even mm -hmm. know why you have to like really think about like what is causing this anxiety of even going live and there's yeah. so many factors to that which it, it's funny because literally like some of the best times I've had streaming were like when I was making nothing because mm -hmm. it, there was just no pressure it was just like have fun like who cares what happens one of the I guess I'll, I'll say this is funny but it's kind of true like statements I've seen is like streamers like really find every excuse not to stream <laughs> like, the, <laughs> yeah, like so I, I see that and i'm like man that is so true but i get it because it, it is stressful going live sometimes because you're like you really have to be in the mood to do it because i think it's noticeable if somebody goes live and they don't necessarily want to be live yeah and that's one of the hardest things about doing the streaming is if you don't feel like coming out you know doing a youtube video that day or if you don't feel like editing that day like you don't feel pressure to turn on the stream and, and go live like with youtube you can take a little bit of time off camera you know you're not you're yeah. constantly saying that you know you can't go live today or stuff like that um so yeah there i think i think the pressure the, the streaming pressure if you want to do it consistently full time especially with what i was talking about earlier with um you know not wanting to take breaks all the time because other people are alive and you're thinking oh me not being live is you know meaning i'm i'm be, you know let i'm growing the stream less things like that mm -hmm. so yeah, that those are just all things for me that I, I just I didn't really enjoy about it. Not to say that it's not a good thing to stream. Like those guys who are doing really well on stream are great at it. Like they obviously enjoy doing it, and it works for them, which is why they're they're successful at it. Um, but yeah, I just think everybody everybody can kind of like like different things, right? Yeah. And whatever works for you works for you. So yeah, it's interesting because like what you were saying uh, earlier with the you know getting a video that's rank ten on the little yeah. Dashboard. For those that aren't YouTubers, there's just this thing whenever you upload a video, there's it shows the, the amount of views you've gotten in a certain time period and what that's based on your previous videos. And so when you mm -hmm. get rank 10, that's the very lowest you can get. Yes. Um, and rank one gets the little fireworks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, it what's just so interesting is like it, it feels like no matter because, you know, five years ago, if you were to think like I like just imagining being at 300,000 subscribers, like that would have just been like, oh, I'm like set. Like wh why would I ever be disappointed in anything anymore? You know, mm -hmm. like I, I built this like huge thing. It's like, it never ends. You're just constantly wanting to progress further and further and further. And it's like, yeah. you can never be fully satisfied, I swear. 
Yeah, and that's I actually was having this conversation with Settled earlier, or not earlier, but like earlier this year, mm-hmm. um, where you like you can't really ever feel satisfied. Like you can be, you should definitely celebrate your achievements and be happy with what you have, but don't ever feel like fully satisfied with where you are because. Yeah. It's, there's, there's been a lot of instances of people, for example, hitting like a million subs and they're like, okay, I can relax after I hit a million subs, but you right? Can't. <laughs> but you can, you, you, you have <laughs> no. to keep pushing. You can't like, you, you genuinely can't just, you know, half-ass everything after a certain amount. Yeah. I, like I said, I really want to reiterate it's important like mental health wise and, and for your own sanity to celebrate your achievements. Definitely, you know, take a little bit of time off if you want to, but don't don't start like half-assing everything. Keep pushing to to the next achievement. And the cool thing with with YouTube and I guess even with Twitch is like numbers numbers can only go up and they can go down too, but the numbers will continue to go up. There's no limit you can hit. Yeah. You know, Mr. Beast has hundred billion subscribers, but yeah. even <laughs> you can get a hundred trillion, right? So you can keep going up. <laughs> uh, so yeah, mega important to keep keep you know climbing and grinding ranks on or, and goals wh- yeah. whatever you're doing. It's interesting because, like, I think more. I don't know. I just wonder sometimes. Um, and this is this is all under the assumption you're enjoying what you're doing because that's really mm-hmm. where the enjoyment comes from is progressing and growing a channel yes. and just you know building that. But there are probably, I don't know, if you hit a point where it's like this is just not as fulfilling anymore. Like it's okay mm-hmm. to take who I think it was was it PewDiePie that kind of like just took a break entirely because yeah. he just realized he just doesn't. Okay. It's like just this endless growth just never ends. You just yeah, he'd been doing it daily for, I mean, a decade or something, like just videos yeah. every single day consistently. And then, I mean, he, I mean, he hit it so big. He, he had the luxury of being able to be like, I think I'm going to call it here, guys, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> I'm good. I might Literally. just retire here, actually. Uh, and he was able to do what he wanted. Um, but, I mean, I feel like that happens quite often there where people are like, you know what? Like, this isn't for me or I think I'm done. Like, this is too much. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, it's tricky. It's a tricky environment to try to navigate through, um, because there's obstacles, you know, all around, but again, that's every work environment, right? Mm-hmm. You kind of just have to, to, to grind through and keep going. So is settled the top subscribed OSR as content creator? Is that correct? I would call him the top at this point. Yeah. I think, um, there are some people who have uploaded videos that ha- on RuneScape that have like millions of subs and in terms of like full-time old school, yeah. yeah, settled, settled by far. And he's, he's over 600,000 subscribers. Has he hit 700,000? Do you know? Um, I don't think he's I have to look right now. I'm not sure actually, but he, he's close. He will be the first guy to hit a million. That's subs, what I was like, going to ask. I was yeah. like, is, is he the, is he going to be the first? It's and that statement alone is insane. Like a, a, a full time RuneScape guy hitting a million subs, like twenty two years after the game's released. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, that is just crazy. Um, and he's one of the most creative people I know, and constantly comes up with incredible ideas, production value off the charts, as you already know. So I, I have no doubts. He, he, uh, he probably has like a three year plan to hit that number and uh he's a smart guy so he'll probably hit it soon but just the fact that we have like i mean dude even a hundred thousand subs is like crazy Mm -hmm. and it's so many people to be subbed to a channel five years ago i think there was only 10 people 10 15 people with over 100k now there's like 70 like 80 runescape people with over 100k subs um yeah just just an absolute mountain of people um it's just it's just it, it just excites me man cuz in the YouTube landscape you always want people to be doing well in like your community's content creation scene because if they're doing well it's going to benefit your channel it always will if there's more people watching videos they will eventually potentially discover your videos discover your channel so for me anybody that's doing well in our scene uh, is becoming successful, their videos are doing well. I'm like, that is amazing for the scene because that could be bringing new people in, watching other people's content, watching our content. So yeah, 100% always worth celebrating people hitting sub goals and hitting view goals, hitting number goals and stuff like that. So always who, makes me really happy. Who are your favorite YouTubers currently, like OSRS YouTubers? Like who, who do you enjoy watching most currently? I try to um, watch as much as I can. I always will watch... Frames, settled jimmy's uh videos they're some of my favorites to watch um i love solo missions videos i'm a bodhi stan i will always be a bodhi stan <laughs> i watch all of bodhi's videos i've watched that guy for my entire youtube career pretty much 
Oh, um, so I love watching Bodhi's, even though his Bodhi's videos are like cocaine, like they, they are just absolute, <laughs> like they are just, you never know in a Bodhi video, if you're going to see black bars on a clip or if the clips are going to be backwards, right. Or if he's going to be just, I, I don't know, doing, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. but it's a Bodhi video. Like he's yep. just the most charismatic guy. I will watch his videos no matter what. Um, I love his little, just like squeals he does and all that stuff. Just, I don't know, super fun to watch him. Who was, um, who was I like, talking to that was like, Bodhi doesn't give a fuck about no, like, up a fuck, about uploading literally roller coaster tycoon on his like main yeah. channel where like most youtubers that was, that's like an abomination like you do not taint your main channel but yeah, he does I, not care i talked I, I think i talked to this with, with with adam about like he just he just yeah he doesn't care like he just uploads what he wants to upload um and the fact that he will do that and still pull like 150k views on on yeah. a runescape video doing whatever he wants to do is that's like cool. amazing that's cool I, there was a video that came out recently that he uploaded i think where like the entire of the video were the clips in reverse order like something happened where it was like the end was at the beginning and the thing was at the end <laughs> and he was still got like 200k views just like just like but that's just it just just shows how, how great he is and yeah. uh and yeah just how charismatic he is so yeah definitely bodhi um and i just i just like watching any any youtuber that's puts in the you know the time and effort to make their videos as good as possible love solo mission videos um i could i should honestly just name every single person that's been on gill our games because they're <laughs> I, I invited them because i watched their videos or watched their streams so yeah yeah definitely that's cool um okay so this is kind of related to runescape now obviously you originally started creating content and uh well i think it was originally pking and stuff but it, yeah it, with old school it was questing that's um, right yep what is your favorite piece of content currently in game? Oh, favorite piece of content. Like if you were to Great just question. play. Yeah, I I love solo raids. Like for me, uh, solo raids is some of my favorite content I've ever done. I actually made a four to one guide on solo raids. It's like my only ever PVM guide. Um, and it actually did pretty well. People were really happy with it, which surprised me. Like anytime I upload a guide, I'm like, man, this, this is not going to do well. <laughs> we're going back to the quest guides. Um, but that like piece of content was so addicting and it's so fun having like clean mage hands, clean melee hands, like dodging damage from Ulm. Um, that to me, it was like the most addicting piece of content. And I would, I would go back and do it every day if I could. Um, I don't, but it was really, really fun to do. I would say that for sure. Um, and what else? Is there anything else I would go do instantly? I mean, any dead man mode, the first few days are really fun for me as well. Mm. Uh, any league those first few days are always really fun um what I'm, was your I, favorite league um i'll dude you know what's sad is i didn't play apparently the trailblazer league was the best league people always say that was their favorite and yeah. i didn't play the trailblazer league yeah, I, I, I i was i was editing gg at the time so mm -hmm. I, I literally couldn't but people say that was their favorite i enjoyed twisted leagues i thought it was pretty fun I actually maxed on Twisted Leagues. Um, I'd never maxed an account before. Damn, now, maxing gamer. on Twisted Leagues doesn't really count, I'll be honest, but hey, it was cool and just to max on something. you couldn't even get a Maxscape, could you? Yeah, I don't think you'd even get a Maxscape, so. <laughs> but it was fun to do. Yeah, uh, so I think Twisted, um, if I had to pick one, probably Twisted. Um, but yeah, there's there's just so much content in the game these days that uh, I don't know if I can really choose a favorite. I'll be honest, I don't play the game as much as I used to, simply because a lot of the content I do is more just focused around inviting people on to do challenges so i'm actually yeah i've edited other people's footage more than i have my own footage over the past three years to be honest with you so <laughs> it's uh looking at it from that perspective it's it's kind of funny but i i definitely want to do um my, my next biggest goal is to do uh inferno i want to get an infernal cape uh so i want to prove that i can can keep up on that aspect so that's that's the goal for this month hell yeah keep uh watch this space look at my twitter hopefully i get it okay by then. okay <laughs> Uh, I'm curious now, obviously, you know, you are under like, you just, you have to work a lot as a content sure. creator, especially with what you're doing. Um, yeah. what do, if any, what are your thoughts on sailing coming out into the game as a brand new skill? Oh man. Great question. I, I love the fact the new skill is coming into the game. I've, I've talked with so many people about skills that could come in and we've all kind of decided that there's not one perfect skill that people would all agree on. Mm -hmm. um, I do not think one thing would come into the game where everybody would be very happy. Um, I'm a big Dungeoneering fan. I would have I voted for Dungeoneering. I know a lot of people weren't, though. But I hope that they make sailing something that's exciting to do and not a tedious, boring grind. I'm 
I haven't watched any of the updates that have come out with for sailing, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't really know what their plans are and uh, how they're going to go about implementing it. Um, I just hope that I think it's fitting for sailing to come in. It makes sense. I think in terms of like marketing that might draw a lot of people in and would be really fun um, in terms of like the impact it's going to have on the economy and the longevity of the game. Not very, not, not sure at all. Um, but I'll say I trust the team. I'll, I'll do a, a, a I'll be a, a cautious, trustworthy supporter of, of, of how the team's going to put it in. It seems like they've been taking a lot of community feedback, which is always really good. Um, but we'll see what happens with it. I don't know. What about you? What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, no, I mean, there's definitely been like a lot that's come out. I feel like it's all still in like they, they've definitely had a lot of posts talking about it. And again, I'm, I'm kind of like with you where it's like I haven't been super up to date with everything. Yeah. But the concept is promising for sure, and it does feel old school. Like it feels like an old school skill. That's important. But yeah. I definitely have the same worries as you. Is like, is this going to actually be just a fun piece of content to grind? It needs repeatedly? to be fun. It needs to be yeah. fun. That's why wording didn't pass. Wording didn't pass because it just did not look fun, like yeah. at all. Like it just looked grindy and boring. Mm -hmm. um, it may have been great for the game's like economy and longevity, yeah. but there's other ways to fix the economy as opposed to coming out with a boring. <laughs> skill um yeah, that's that's true yeah so I, I i hope it becomes something that people are, are willing to log in and play um and i i hope it has a lot of different aspects like it's not just one you know static grind to go from one to 99 i hope it's uh you know there's a lot of different things you can do to train and it becomes uh hopefully one of the better skills that, that have come out um but yeah we'll see okay so excluding any runescape content what mm -hmm. do you enjoy doing in your free time like what especially in regards to content like movies mm -hmm. tv uh any other like non runescape youtube like what 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 do you like to consume what do i like to consume um well i'm a huge sports fan I, I watch a lot of sports stuff um in terms of like movies and shows like uh i love shows that are like thrillers like cinematic thrillers are my favorite things to consume i actually i'm a huge christopher nolan fan so yes. like any, one, any any one of his movies i'm like a sucker for a title card appearing on screen or on screen and then like a bass drop of the music hitting at the same time uh. like, I, I i try to include that with with gill in our games like there's just a lot of inspiration in there for making things yeah. just overly dramatic and intense with deep music <laughs> and everything like i love it's that so, so much we man. love it's it as humans yeah yeah it's just so good it's my favorite inception is my favorite my favorite movie by far um with uh with how he made that so yeah i love i love movies that just have really good like dark production cinematic value thrillers and stuff like that um i would say i i can definitely consume a lot but aside from that um i don't like watch that much tv that many movies if i get recommended one i'll watch it but i don't like just in my free time the the one thing is is like back when i was playing the game a lot and I was skilling and I was, you know, on every single day, I actually found myself watching more because I needed something to do while I was skilling. Right. So I just throw on like a movie or a show. Mm -hmm. Um, but now that I'm not really doing that much anymore, I find myself watching less. Um, so what, yeah. what other activities do you like? Do you, do you like to read or, um, um, haven't read a book since college, to be honest with you. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've, I've read a couple of books since then, but not, I would say I, I like to go outside. I like to, I like to hike, like to, I like to play sports. Um, big soccer fan, big basketball fan. I'm trying to get into pickleball now. Hopefully yes. I don't get any fun of that. I was, gonna, yeah. I was just about to ask. I started getting yeah. into it this summer. Yeah. I played a couple of times. I got a paddle now. So there's like some new oh, courts yeah. that open up just by us. So we're, we're, we're probably going to try to play there and see how that goes. Um, you have to be yeah. so careful when it comes to pickleball, like saying you're really? a pickleballer because like, it's I know. just, it's so like, I've, it's like, I okay, like, yeah, like, just following the trends of, you know, whatever is, it is so I, fun though. It's dude, I, I'm a huge ping pong fan. Uh, yeah. and it's not ping pong, but it feels a little bit like ping pong. Yeah. So it's so, so to, easy to pick up. It's just like, it, you just go in and you're just all of a sudden yeah. having a good rally it's like this feels yeah, so man. good and, and it's a workout too like you work it up is. a sweat doing that so i i think it's hey there's nothing wrong with with physical activity and getting into something like that yeah. right so it's uh, i think it's fun um so yeah definitely definitely that i like traveling too um but it's it's easier said than done consistently traveling right uh yeah. if you uh if you like traveling so most of the time i just find myself on discord with friends uh hanging out and and enjoying life when i can when i'm not editing all the time that's so cool. Yep. Um, 
Okay, going to the some of the Twitter topics. Uh, yeah, let's get to it. Hugh Jass asks, what was your favorite quest guide that you made? Favorite quest guide that I made? I had a couple. Well, I'll give a shout out to the first one, which was Cook's Assistant. That was the first ever quest guide I uploaded. <laughs> How many I views remember does I that uploaded. Have? Do you know? Dude, it's like 120K, I think. Like, <laughs> I remember I uploaded that quest guide like the, the day of release for old school, and it had like 30K views in a day. Jesus. I was averaging like 5K a day at that time on my channel, or 5K on a video. So <laughs> just to see that blow up, like if people hadn't have watched that Cook's Assistant quest guide, then I maybe would have never made quest guides. But the fact wow. that people watched a quest guide for Cook's Assistant of all things, uh, kind of started everything off. Um, another one of my favorites was um, the RFD quest guide I uploaded, where I just edited out myself bringing like a knife instead of a chisel, and I just didn't tell anybody. Uh, <laughs> in the quest guides, I probably screwed over like tens of thousands of people, like just <laughs> making them bring a knife to like the King Awo guy thing when they need to chisel. I can't remember, <laughs> but yeah, I just we get talked about that all the time. Um, it, dude, I was uploading three quest guides a day when Old School RuneScape came out. Like Holy. I was pump, I was pumping these bad boys out, man. You can go back to any of my quest guides and just see the 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 gear I'm wearing is just terrible. Like I was just knocking these out. I was wearing like an Addy Sim doing these quests and things like that. But it was That's it was awesome, really funny. That, yeah. yeah, at the time I was like, kind of like the, the quest guides were kind of just like doing quests with a friend in a Skype call at the time, like. It wasn't even really like a professional guide. I was like, hey, I'm going to be in a, a, a Skype call with Soup, and we're going to do this quest together. We're going to laugh. You know, we're going to make some mistakes. But at the end of the day, we're going to get it done, right? So yeah. that's, got, that's kind of how I see them. Um, the Desert Treasure quest guide I uploaded uh, took like 13 hours to do because I was severely underleveled doing that quest. And I think I died like three times with the vampire guy uh, in the uh, in the Mort Myers swamp, and it was absolutely brutal. But, uh, but I finally got that one done. Um, yeah, quest. Yeah. Oh, my regicide quest guide was great too. I have a lot of favorite quest guides. If you can't tell, there was a lot of good ones during my regicide quest guide. I tell everybody to kill a raw rabbit in the elf forest because I say they're gonna need the raw rabbit for later. And then I, I swear, fifteen minutes later in the quest guide, you just hear me go, "Why do I have this raw rabbit?" And then I just, I just <laughs> and then I just drop the rabbit and continue on with the guide. Like that, that, it's, that I think that video is still up, and I just say that. But I'm just like. Like I said, it was they were just a different breed at the time. But uh, shout out Slayer Music and the the Quest Guide Helper for for fixing all my mistakes later on. Okay, um, where did the name Soup come from? You've changed so, your name a, a few times. You've said yeah. Previously. So when I I originally made my YouTube channel it was called Third Age Film, um, then that switched to Soup RS. But my name at the time when I had the YouTube channel Third Age Film was Soup or Hero. So yeah, just like. Just like the plan of the word superhero. Mm -hmm. um, I just thought it was clever, the unique superhero. Yeah, yeah. But people, <laughs> a name like that, if it's long, people are just going to call you by like a nickname or like the first part of that name. Yeah. And obviously, soup was the first word. Um, and just start, when 2014, I think, is when Jagex released a bunch of names into the game that were inactive. And I remember at the time I, I had managed to snag the name soup and, um, and you know, kind of went with that ever since. Looking back, like soup is not soup isn't like the best name for branding. Like you can type in soup on Google, Twitter, YouTube, and my channel probably won't pop up. To be honest with you, mm. it's just like way too common of a word. So I switched it to Soup RS, which has helped a little bit. Um, I don't think I love my name, uh, but it's I've had it for well, you know, ten years now, right? So mm -hmm. I don't think I can just randomly change to something else and be like, hey guys, I've rebranded. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm okay with it at this point. I, I think it's fine. So have you? like ever like realistically considered getting a name change or absolutely is it, or is it just pretty much at this point you're just gonna stick with soup for the rest of eternity so so I'm, at this point i'm sticking with soup for the rest of eternity most likely unless anything changes okay. but at the time during the 2014 name change i also tried getting the name strider um Ooh. from lord of the rings because yeah. i thought that name was so badass strider badass. i was like i want the name strider <laughs> man it's so cool so I told myself at the time, if I get the name Strider, I'm rebranding to everything Strider, but I didn't get the name. Um, but there is a universe, there's a world where I get that name yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm Strider in this podcast right now instead of Soup. <laughs> so yeah, there's, uh, but I think Strider is such a cool name and I'm a huge Lord of the Rings uh, fan. So oh, yeah, same. It's, um, yeah, it's uh, that, that would have been it for sure. Um, 
Yeah, I well, I I originally was say Bay Bay with Y's and that's of right. Bays. Yeah, the Bay Bay. Yep. Yeah, and then um, say Bay came out. Well, say Bay was my original like RS name in here just because I thought it was like clean. I even tried to ask um, this guy from RS3 who has the name just say S A E. Mm-hmm. I thought that would just be like hella clean years ago. That's bad, just yeah, mad yeah. clean. It, it's just. It's one of those things where it's, it almost doesn't roll off the tongue as nicely. If, if it's just, mm-hmm. if it was just say, it's like, it, it feels like, and it's just like a common word as well, just the word say as well. But it's yeah. like, for some reason, just over time, I just accepted say bay and I just felt like it had a good say ring to great. it. Yeah. If, if you type your name into any platform, I'm sure your, your stuff is going to pop up first. Your Twitter is Seder, right? Yeah. So Seder is my first name in real life. Seder is your first name. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. That makes sense. Now. And honestly, okay. So this was really the uh, problem is like, okay, first of all, Twitter, you can't change your name. So, well, at least you couldn't. I don't know if you can anymore with Elon hmm. Musk, but like there, there's you can change your like name but you can't change your at and you can't so, change your handle oh yeah. really i didn't know that oh wow yeah oh wait no no me what is it are you able to t- oh, maybe it's you can't change it to something that somebody has had in the past because somebody has hmm. just Seder, which i thought would be clean i it's see my name and but and it, the account's been inactive for like 13 uh, years or whatever. yeah so yes. i'm like okay, okay whatever um and of course, Sebe is taken as well. So it's just like yep. at some, at, you know. And then on Twitch, you can't just have spaces. You have to have underscores. And I I do not like underscores. I'm with you, man. I I'm not a, a not a fan problem. of underscores. Yeah. yeah. So when I rebranded from Sebe Bay, which didn't have any underscores, which originally Sebe Bay was supposed to have spaces, but I just mm-hmm. combined them. And then I was like, I could change my name to just Sebe actually on Twitch. But like, I want the spaces. And I yeah. don't want the underscore. So then I was just it's, like, you know what? Like, I'm just going to rebrand a Seder. And then yeah. at that point, there's no real affiliation. It, it was kind of like um, me deciding for like the future of my content, like long-term future. Like if I, mm-hmm. it would be nice to just have my real name because it is unique and I can have it. Like just to have yeah. that as my handle. So I decided it. Uh, with that instead of Sebe. But people know me as Seder or Sebe, which I think is Sebe. fine. Isn't it interesting like how much thought goes into like your name and your brand it's, and your handle? Yeah. Like you like I think you it you everybody kind of thinks about it, especially if you're a creator, but we're we're so far I mean we're still young into the internet age, mm-hmm. I guess in the big scale, but we're so like we're like 10, 15 years now into YouTube and, and Twitch is a little bit earlier than that but like a lot of just normal name handles and common word handles are like taken by other people who are creators now too right so you have to like kind of definitely come up with your own unique way of making your name but some people don't like having numbers in their name right so some people don't like having underscores yeah Yeah, like I'm, i'm also a fan of just clean like just one word or two word names that like mesh well together. Mm-hmm. Like I think Jimmy does a good job with his name where it's J with Jimmy with a, with a one. I yeah, think that's perfect. That, that's Something clean. like that. You can add numbers just not at the end where they're just out of place. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like three, say Bay three or something. Yeah. Right. Like definitely <laughs> switch that up. Right. Like so, but it, it's, it is interesting and, and it's important too, because if you name yourself something that people can easily Google or go to YouTube mm-hmm. and you're the first thing that pops up when, when they Google that, then, yeah, I mean that can make a big difference. It's it's a hundred percent worth putting in the time to to make. It, and it is funny looking at it though because you have people like you know settled. It's just a common word. You know, framed. Yeah. It's a word. You know, soup. It's also just a word, right? Mm-hmm. So, but then you know, Torvesta has a great name like Torva Vesta, related to RuneScape, but nothing else in the world is called Torvesta aside yep. from his YouTube name. So same with like Bodhi also, even though Bodhi is like. A meme, I think, something with a boat being named Bodie McBoatface back in the day or something. But <laughs> yeah, it's it handles are important. It's, they it's, are it's important. A, it's, a, and, it's a cool topic to talk about. I like it. And like YouTube just recently um like gave official handles as well. Yeah. Uh, so yep. I'm so disappointed. On Discord, they uh, officially came yeah. out with like actual handles. And I wasn't was up with that. That's I wasn't crazy. able to get Seder, but I uh, was able to get Sebe without a space. And it's just like that's fine, I guess, but I was really disappointed that I couldn't get Seder. Cause. I wonder how they chose like the order for that of like who got to choose the names first. I know, because I, I I don't know how they did that, but yeah, I, I got some messages about because I'm super S on Discord. I was able to grab that at least, but okay. I had some people message me and they're like, 
dude, how did you get that name first? I was like, wait, why do you want to be Soup RS? Like, yeah. what, what, how does this relate to you whatsoever? But I'm sure there was a lot of people who who had names taken on Discord who were like, man, I don't like this. Like, I wish it was something else. Yeah. So what's your uh, YouTube as? Just Soup RS? Yeah, just Soup RS on YouTube. That's I like fully switched. Actually, that was one of the, the more important decisions I made was 2000. Uh, I think 18, I officially switched my YouTube name from, because it was Third Age Film, yeah. to Soup RS. Like, I made that switch just because I thought Third Age Film is unique, but I, I it was just way too long for me. And yeah. I had, like, four names at the time, and I really just wanted to narrow it down to, like, two total names over the course of, like, all my socials. So that was uh, also a good change. It's funny how, like, earlier you were just saying, like, we, we really are still in the very early beginnings of mm -hmm. Internet. It yeah. seems like we're so late, like everyone's so late to the game. It's like, dude, it's 2023. Like dude, no yeah, time man. has passed in the grand scheme of things. Seriously. Yeah. In the grand scheme, it hasn't even been, I mean, internet has been around for what, I don't know, 30, 40 years or something like that. But like the, the social media internet, age, like YouTube, Twitch age is not even two decades old. Like yeah. it's, it's not, it's not old at all. So yeah, it's scary to think about. It's scary to think about, but, but cool that we're a part of it. Um, let me see. Uh, did YouTube come out in 2006? Was that it? Yeah, YouTube? 2005, 2006. I think that, one of the two. That's nuts to think YouTube's just barely an adult, you know? Yeah, 18. Absolutely crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. And, um, and how things have changed in that time, man. Like, it's just, it's just boomed. It's absolutely abs boomed. Absolutely nuts. I remember when YouTube first came out. Like, I think my dad showed me YouTube because we, we got a home computer in late 2003 and i discovered runescape in 2004 like early mm -hmm. 2004 that's when i first started playing it and then youtube i didn't discover i i think i actually was watching i i could be wrong on this because i don't actually know when homestar runner came out i don't know if you watched homestar runner did you sounds familiar oh dude homestar runner was the homestar greatest runner ever. yeah i'll have to look it up yeah uh it's just like strong bad and trog door and all that kind of stuff like that okay. i don't know if you ever anyway um <laughs> but that was like big and then there was a site called iFilm, which was like the youtube i knew kind mm. of before like i knew about youtube and then yeah my dad showed me youtube and it was just like just to think this is going to be the biggest site ever absolutely crazy yeah i love looking at nostalgic videos from like 2005 2006 i think the first ever YouTube video uploaded to the site was like the creator in front of like elephants. And he's just going, oh, hey, yeah, these yeah, elephants yeah. are really cool. And it's like an eight second clip of him just doing that. <laughs> I'm like, who would have thought that this video would be the first one on a platform with like, dude, there's like thousands of videos uploaded a minute to this platform. Like how cr that's crazy for me to think about. Um, and how it's just blossomed from home videos of people in their rooms making videos to like full scale productions that Literally. come out exclusively on YouTube. Like Mr. Beast's recent videos, I'm like, dude, there's this is like millions of dollars going millions into this video. And millions, and like, yeah. I, it's just I, hard to think about. Hard to think about. Yeah. But it's cool. It's cool to, to be a part of it. Do you remember the first YouTube video you watched? First YouTube video I watched. Do, do you have oh, any, any idea? Because I remember mine. Uh, I remember uh, no. Oh, you know what it was? What? No, this was this was on Newgrounds. You ever watch a video called The Ultimate Showdown? I think like, that this sounds is the so ultimate familiar. showdown. Yeah. The ultimate. Yes. It's like <laughs> yeah. it, it came out on Newgrounds, but then I watched it on YouTube. I think like a day later, and this was like 2006, 2007, I think. So that 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 may have been yeah. one of the first. That's all I can remember. The first video I ever watched was uh, the White Stripes hardest button to button music video. No way. Yeah, the one oh, with like the drum sets like moving. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. Wait, that's a classic. That's oh, yeah. so good. That was the first so one I ever watched. Oh, that's amazing. Everybody comment down below your first ever YouTube video you watched. Let's see it. Let's see yeah, it. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> um, oh, well, so just on the topic of like early internet age, what, what are your thoughts on AI? Do you have any? Oh, thoughts on AI? Scary, yeah. but really cool. Yeah, yeah definitely really cool. Sure. I think... Uh, I, I think everybody, or at least I have, messed around with like ChatGPT and mm -hmm. like all the the image generation AI and stuff like that. Um, we we sometimes will go through like a, a YouTube thumbnail AI burst where we're just like, I wonder if this would be a good YouTube thumbnail. And we just type in a bunch of RuneScape terms. Yeah. Unfortunately, AI does not understand old school RuneScape at all right? in terms oh, of graphics. Really? So unlucky. nothing ever really works out. But just AI in general is... Uh, it's a cool topic. I'm I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm very excited to see where it goes. Are you more scared or optimistic about the future with AI? Uh, 
with AI. Um, great question. I've never even thought about this. I'm going to say optimistic. I'm in general an optimistic guy, I would say. So I'm going to say it's good things are going to come out of it uh, as opposed to bad things. But, you know, with every major thing that comes out, there will be, you know, some some iffy things alongside it. But I would say optimistic. I would say optimistic. Yeah, the thing that's crazy is like I've seen some YouTubers lately that are like, I mean, they're, um, I don't know if you watch Mark Marcus Brownlee just that yeah the, yeah the, the tech guy but tech he, guy. Yep. he's he's made some videos and like in the background it looks completely realistic and then you just realize it's fake like it, it's just an ai thing yeah. yeah and and your um johnny harris i don't know if you watch his videos at all but mm. he he just recently came out with a video where like he literally has an ai face that is looks completely realistic like he I'm, can just transform his face into anybody i'm sure that i everybody has watched a video that was deep faked but you didn't realize it because like Dude. it looked so realistic or just it was so convincing like i'm sure and th actually that's the one part where it does scare me is is the political scene like a hundred percent like that dudes. like like I, with this election we've got coming up here next year it's like it's it's the, it, there's gonna be warfare it's with that crazy. stuff crazy so, yeah that you know i changed my answer i'm actually really scared now <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just kidding no it, but yeah i'm I'm curious to see what's going to happen because I, I know I've seen like it's it's gone to Congress and stuff with like, should this be banned yeah. and should, should this not be allowed? So we're going to see. We're going to see. It's yeah, it's crazy just to think. I mean, because even like as a content creator, like imagine imagine AI gets to the point where you just literally tell AI like, hey, make a make a YouTube video for me, basically. Like just literally like, make a yeah, the soup video that's interesting yeah. that people will like yeah. and just generate something like they're starting to make like movies and stuff in a obviously yeah. they're like crappy right now, but it's like, you can literally just make a full on movie. That's AI. There's it, been a couple people in the runescape scene who have like their entire video premise was like AI told me what to do or the, an AI made this video, holy. Uh, like wrote the script for this video. Right. Um, uh -huh. It's definitely in its infancy in the beginning stages, yeah. but I, I think it's realistic to assume that like, if you just, if you ask AI like to generate your sponsored segment for you, like just to say, just <laughs> a ask it what to say, and then you just it comes up with a script for you, like yeah. that's very realistic. Like I'm sure it's being done already. Dude, um, so there's um there's like an XQC AI Twitch stream, and it's uh -huh. just it's literally just shows like a fake version of XQC just of streaming. XQC. I think I've seen clips of that. Yeah. yeah. And it just he's just saying stuff. Like it's clear that it's fake, but like there in a few years it won't be clear probably yeah man but i just wonder like man one of these days i'm just gonna come out with like a sebe cast where it's just like i it's some popular guest that has enough audio that i can just like you can replicate and they we're just gonna have a full-on three-hour conversation and nobody's that would be gonna insane. know that would be insane That'd maybe be this one crazy. is already ai yeah I maybe it know. is this is so convincing <laughs> <laughs> okay um what is the best kind of soup Best kind of soup. So I'm a huge fan of hot and sour soup from like any Chinese place. I think hot and sour Ooh, is delicious. Yeah. I love hot and sour. Um, I always will get that if I ever get Chinese food. Um, aside from that, I think a good clam chowder is really good. Uh, a really good chicken noodle soup. You can't go wrong with a good chicken noodle soup. Um, and then the final one is tomato soup, but it has to have grilled cheese with it. it has to have grilled cheese yes. with it. Um, I think that is just an, a phenomenal combo. Um, so yeah, I think those are those are probably my three favorite, three four favorite. And the um, grilled cheese needs to be Kraft singles. Yeah, dude. Have you ever seen videos on YouTube of like professional chefs preparing Gordon Ramsay? Did you see Gordon that Rams, one? Yes, the Gordon Ramsay. Oh, that's an abomination. He, what are you that doing? That is one of the worst videos. He, he puts these <laughs> 10 inch chunks of cheese on these slabs of bread, puts it into onto a, a fire on this pan and dude. it burns the hell of the bread. The cheese, <laughs> he puts kimchi know. in. He put kimchi in the grilled cheese. Fucking I'm sorry, nasty. dude. I said, that's not how you do it. And then I remember this other chef made a response to him. He's like, Gordon Ramsay, that was an abomination. I'm going to try. I'm gonna, this is actually how you make it. And then this guy puts in like a four cheese mixture <sighs> onto some like ciabatta bun. I'm like, dude, what are you guys need, doing? You yeah. just need some white bread and some craft singles and some butter. Like that's all you need, dude. It does not have it. to be crazy, man. It does not have to be. I don't know. I don't grilled know. Maybe it's done need, differently, but grilled cheese need to be simple. Like that is what makes a classic grilled cheese. It's dude. just white bread, 
Yep. A craft single and butter. And you and are all you set. You are, all like, you that need. is going to slap so hard. It's absolutely delicious. You cannot, it's very hard to mess that up too. Even if it's a little bit burnt, maybe if it's not as burnt as you want to, it's still going to yeah. absolutely hit different. Like so, I, I'm, yeah. I'm even, I'm, I'm so purist that there, there are people that argue like putting, you know, some deli meat inside, like makes it better. No, it does not. Like you, that's not a grilled cheese at that I'm, point. I'm it's something purist. different. Like do not alter it. Do not put hot sauce in it. Do not do anything to it. Just, just yeah. the cheese bread and butter you're good i'm with you no i'm 100 percent with you on the same page every time because i actually like like watching a lot of like cooking and food videos on youtube yeah, that i think they're fun to watch and then every time i see like a video of some person like dressing up what should be a simple recipe i'm like man no this is something different at this point and the grilled cheese honestly the big the, i'm so happy you've seen that gordon Ramsay it's clip so bad it's infuriating I, I can't tell if he's just trolling like halfway <laughs> he must know that it's garbage like because the cheese isn't melted the, the bread is burnt but he cuts it in half he's like oh my god look at this gorgeous like delicious i'm like dude no he There's realizes no in the moment he's like this is, yeah. this is not going well but i have to play it off like it's they're good. too far they're too far into the scene to, to stop at that point so they just have to go through with it and then they thought maybe it'll go viral and it, it did i mean that that video is like so many yeah. views but oh yeah yeah that's, that's funny that's right i watched it because moist critical uploaded it ah and yes okay he, he yep. was and then he was doing his too. version of it. oh, <laughs> it's, it's absolutely disgusting. hilarious dude Everybody should go watch that and just laugh at oh it. it. It cracks me up every time. It's it's phenomenal acting by Gordon, honestly. There's no way he actually thought it was oh good. Oh, my God. No way he thought it was good. Okay. Bailey asks, how do you decide which content creators are invited to participate in Gillenor Games? Do you have Ooh. certain inclusion and exclusion criteria for it? And who's oh, been your man. favorite creators to work with? Yeah, super good question, but super difficult. Um. It, it kind of for it, it varies season to season right because you you have to like when i when i go into the next season i first have to look back at the previous season i'm like okay which are the creators that maybe had the best storylines that had the most you know supporters during the season um do they deserve or deserve but should you know should they have a spot in the next season um so that's why sometimes you'll see some people come back some people don't come back uh, another big thing, honestly, is you need, so I get asked this all the time. It's like, why do you have like maybe the same people come back all the time every season? To be honest with you, like it's important to have the big name people back. Like if I don't have, you know, Bodhi, Settled, Frame, Torvesta, those guys, those are some of the biggest creators we have in the game. It would be silly not to have them back on the show. They have such a, you know, a big supporter base. They have people who may watch GG just to watch them. Um, so I think it's important to, to have like that solid core of the big names who come back and, uh, and you know, have a place on the show. Um, and then I always try to split it up where it's, for the most part, I'd say 60% people returning and then 40% people are new to the show, like rookies, right? Vet, vets and rookies. So at that point, I just have to find people who have never been on who, A, have like a name in the scene already. B are consistently, or at least for the most part, consistently uploading content, and um, you know, have in a sense uh, built up a fan base and, and are going to have people supporting them if they're on the show. Um, and then the final one, and one that I included last season, was just one or two people who don't have, like, they're just completely random, who have never actually, uh, don't actually have any like videos or streams. They just were a random player, and that's kind of what Eight Set was last season. Um, even though he was involved in the community, mm -hmm. but it's just a whole. It's 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 one of the hardest parts is trying to find a cast of people that have, um, you know, a good mixture of rookies, a good mixture of the veterans from previous seasons, and then trying to make it kind of its own unique show with the cast or season with the cast, right? Because you want each season to be different with the people you have on. So you want different storylines. Uh, you want people who had previous storylines from different seasons may be continuing that storyline on the next season. Um, things along those lines. There's a lot that goes into it, and I always feel terrible. I always feel so bad anytime I, I don't invite somebody back from a previous season. And I swear it's not because I hate them. I really do not hate a single person in the content creation scene whatsoever. It's just I think it's important to have a, a, you know new faces come back every single year, um, or new faces every single year, and then have some people come back previous seasons. Um, I could talk about this for a long time because it's it's generally one of the harder aspects of it. Um, and no, I like I 
fully understand. I mean, yeah. I, I host a weekly podcast and there's people yep. that are like, why haven't you had me or why haven't you had this person on it? I'm like, it's just, yeah. it's just there's just no winning. You're, you're just difficult. not going to have people on. You can't have every single and person on. People also ask me all the time. It's like, hey, why don't you have, you know, a season with only no content creators on it, like full rookies. Like no, people, you can't it, do it's, that. Man. It's impossible. Like if the one of the hardest parts I've already said is scheduling the filming sessions. Yep. And that's with people who are full time creators. Like, could you imagine scheduling 20 people who don't play the game full time? Or just burns out or ghosts job. you randomly? Yeah, like. it just burns out <laughs> ghosts. People who don't have, you know, you know, microphone setups that sound good, <laughs> right? It's just, it's a whole host of issues that can be fixed if we're all in like a, the same house and I, I can control everything on that end, yeah. but I can only control so much from, you know, my computer to over to theirs. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's the hardest part is, is just, yeah, the cast, the cast is hundred percent tricky. Um, and I wish I could have like 30 people on, but could you imagine 30 perspectives of like, editing up for a oh challenge and like 30 confessionals and like trying to cut that down into like under an hour like it's just it's just too much at that point yeah. um so yeah that's why i'm excited to do like kind of like the mini gg thing i uploaded uh, a couple weeks ago where i can have maybe people who aren't able to be on a full season and instead mm. i can invite them on to be on a single episode that's kind of like gg but we can film that in, a, in two hours right it can be done very for the most part pretty quickly so that's why uh, you know i'm hoping that video um, does well and and it can lead to to more episodes where people can finally see their favorite creators compete it's just more in that short form content mm -hmm. as opposed to the long form gg stuff dude you know what you should do this mm. is completely joking by the way uh well <laughs> doesn't have to be joking but Let's like imagine dude, you know there's a rune fest and you just plan out a day where you make an irl going oh games. that uh, would out, be fun like a park or something <laughs> that would be fun hey it'll be cool is every rune fest has a massive computer setup room like there's hundreds of computers it would be cool to have like a two-hour session where i just give everybody you know challenges and we actually can eliminate people in real life if they get up from their, their computer and leave and stuff until there's only one remaining that, that would be, pretty would be fun. cool set up that some cameras cool. as well so you're constantly seeing like what's actually yeah, happening in the room exactly exactly um, that's a good idea it's a good idea yeah uh i don't so we had like a based meetup in tennessee uh a few i did i saw pics of yeah. that yep yeah, that was super fun. And Prison Joe made like a little blog of it. And we were joking because like I went on base after dark like a, a few, uh, like uh, I think a couple months afterward. And I was just talking. Mm -hmm. I was like, imagine having a reality show where you just like set up cameras in this like cabin. <laughs> yeah, just man. Constantly just get all the footage and have confessionals like in like private rooms talking like a Dude. real reality of these content big creators. Stuff, big, big brother style, man. <laughs> yeah, big brother style. That'd be really funny. Oh people like that stuff. People, I, there's a reason they, reality shows are popular. Like people, people love that stuff. Eat that up. If that, people if you had like up. the top creators in a house for five days and you just created a narrative about it and had confession. Dude, oh my god, that's that. It's it's interesting seeing the progression of GG season to season because every single person on the show like kind of stepped up their the character they're portraying. Like everybody's kind of playing a version of themselves on the yeah. show. But people create, you know alliances people you know maybe have a little bit of fake beef on the show but people the viewers eat it up like the mm -hmm. people will like you'll and obviously that's kind of on my end too because i definitely elevated in the editing scene adding you know like adding the dramatic music in the background making it seem like it's the end of the world but people people will eat it up there's a reason people love watching it it's it's fun to watch um and uh yeah they, like like you're saying people would, would would eat it up people would watch it all the time yeah it's it's a good thing that most people in the community, OSR's community, are adults. Because I could definitely imagine if yeah. we were, if we were like appealing to like a younger audience, people would genuinely think like the drama is like real, and these people, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, definitely. But at the end of the day, you just realize it's all like for fun. It's interesting that the the viewer viewer like average age of a RuneScape content viewer is probably at this point like twenty five to thirty one, like that yeah. age range. I would say yeah. like it's definitely older. Um, which in turn is actually really good for like sponsorships for the old school RuneScape scene mm -hmm. because companies are looking for single males with disposable income, right? So, yeah, and what, what, what genre hits that old school RuneScape? Not that anybody, everybody's single, but it's, it's like a really good age range to hit, uh, for, for, I guess, promotional purposes and, and it's, uh, it's translated really well to a lot of people being able to go full time in the scene because of it. Mm-hmm. 
Now you're, t- well, what is, if you know off the top of your head, what's your uh, female ratio of like for most of your videos? Oh man. Cause mine is less than a percent. <laughs> I think mine, yeah, mine's probably three, maybe two to three. I haven't looked in a long time, probably okay. two to three. Actually, Gilner Games bumped it up a little bit. Okay. Um, because I had people telling me that they had like their girlfriend or their like wife yeah, there was a alongside them and stuff like that. that. As well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's kind of cool, uh, which, which bumped it up a little bit. But yeah, still majority male, 100%. I'm. Re- Really curious how they track that, though. Um, obviously, I think when you sign up for an account, it probably asks you if you're male or female. But I, I'm curious. It, I feel like numbers are maybe a little bit higher than than they're putting in the analytics. But who am I to guess? Yeah. Who am I to know? Hopefully not lower, because you can't really yeah, go much lower. Not lower. Yeah. Zero, zero females watch your videos. <laughs> yeah, one of the, one of the really fascinating things is kind of brought up earlier is like you got there. Oh, Settled was talking about this as well. We're like. There are people that don't even know what RuneScape is, and they're watching his videos. And that's yeah, got to be the case with Gilinor Games. There are people who have no idea what old school RuneScape is, but they watch it because it's like actual quality entertainment. Yeah, actually, I was. I think it's a good time to bring this up with people who don't like this. This is why Settled is is so good at what he does. Is you have to kind of create your content and 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 explain it like you're. Explain it to somebody who doesn't play the game. Like you, you want to appeal to that wide audience, so that way, if somebody watches who doesn't know what they're watching, they're like, "Oh, okay, I understand what he's saying here. Now I can understand what he's doing in his content." Right. Mm-hmm. So for Gilinor Games, a lot of the times they'll get comments. It's like, "Hey, why don't you have like an end game PVM challenge with max gear at the best bosses and stuff like that?" While that would be a really fun challenge, it would not appeal to the general audience yeah. of YouTube. Right. It's it's just too hard to explain. People wouldn't know what's going on. So that's why when I'm think that why when that's why when I'm thinking of like challenges to put in and stuff like that, just the simple challenges that do require skill in terms of like on the spot thinking and you know routing and stuff like that. Uh, but it's a simple challenge that anybody can who's watching can for the most part understand. Like that's kind of the the what you have to hit, um, and that's why Settle, like I said, is really good at what he does because he can explain anything to anybody and it'll make sense. Like he's just so good at that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's that's the really important thing is I think that's even translates to if anybody wants to make a new series or anybody wants to, um, you know, yeah, try to come up with a new series. It's important. It can you can make it com- complicated and it might sound amazing on your end, but you have to make sure it, people understand it in like when you present it to them. Um, and one of the biggest like wins you can have is if your content makes it like outside of the RuneScape content creation scene. Yep. Which is uh, what Settle does hit with his videos multiple times, right? So, because he has, I mean, he'll hit like 400k video, 400k views in like a day or two, right? Like, just a- absolutely nuts. absurd, absolutely nuts. Um, but it's because he has a dedicated base of not only RuneScape viewers but non-RuneScape players who watch his videos because they like the way he presents things, they like the mm-hmm. music he uses, they like how he does things. So, it's uh, it's yeah, it's inspiring, man. It really is, and I think it's it's a something everybody should try to to try to, I guess, not necessarily emulate, but try to put in their own words. Not that there's anything wrong with high-level PVMing content or doing stuff at the highest level and even having, like, high-level challenges, but you just always have to present it in a way where it's... If you're trying to make it a popular series, that it's appealing to the general audience, right? So Mm -hmm. I think that's very important. So we talked about this earlier as well, like mm-hmm. just kind of overall like end goals with YouTube content creation. Have you thought of any, anything like any sort of series that would go above and beyond even Gillen or games that you'd be interested in doing? Like if, for example, like money and time weren't really objects. Yeah. I, I think, I think for me at this point, I really like the competitive reality tv show realm Mm -hmm. i think it's like i've i like i've already said i'm not great at the game in general and i don't really feel a desire to create like an account progression series i think other people do it better and i don't think i have the desire to to play the game that much um i prefer like i said the editing and production side so if i'm able if if i'm able to find a show or or a type of series where I can continue on with GG just in a shorter form. Like I said, that's kind of that's kind of what I was doing with the One Remains videos, um, where it's just GG but in a single video. Yeah. Like if I can have a series like that do well and come out with it consistently, I just very much prefer editing other people's content into like an exciting competitive reality form as opposed to my own content. Um, while it, and it is tricky because it means that 
if I come out with something that's my own content, it might feel like it, it might feel like out of place compared to what I usually upload. Um, but I hope that I'm able to find another niche or uh, genre after GG ends, if it ever ends, who knows, uh, where I can continue on with like, yeah, competitive tournament style videos is what I really like. So like in a, in a world where you like your channel just absolutely starts exploding and you realize like this is going beyond runescape this is going this is becoming like whatever it becomes but it's still centered around this kind of like reality competitive sure, nature yeah. and stuff like would you be interested in like almost just having everyone like edit your stuff like hiring a team to do all this stuff mm -hmm. or, or do you actually find the most fulfillment in you kind of being the person that's leading it like would you be able to let go of a lot of the so, things that yeah. you enjoy super good question that that is like that was the hardest thing for me last season is i had plans to get people involved in the editing process but i just like felt this i didn't feel like i could trust anybody else right mm -hmm. i was just like i have to do this myself like i can't like what if what if they don't capture my style what if they don't do it how i want to and then i have to do, end up doing it all myself uh -huh. and it's like a it's a good and a bad thing because at the end of the day the end product is exactly what you wanted it to be but if you spend the time to find somebody who does it exactly how you want that time that you save is like so worth it and it, you can it make so much more content as and well you make with so your free much time. more content exactly right and it's the stress level goes down massively so mm -hmm. that's that's a flaw that i have is i just i sometimes it's hard to like kind of give somebody give something up to somebody else to see if they can help and stuff like that um that's just what happens when you become addicted to like <laughs> your own content the editing process and well it's, and all it, that it's also because you just have such high expectations where it's like sure yeah inevitably it wouldn't be perfect initially like you'd have to get an editor and they would have to kind of find their way even if they're the best editor ever like yeah you, they'd still have to start finding the way of like the way you want the video to be made and then yeah. that takes time in and of itself and to be fair, like it's unrealistic to expect somebody to like, if you ask them to try to edit how you want to, to, to for them to get it first time, like it's just unrealistic. Like it, things take time, right? Things will, will mm -hmm. with practice, they'll, they'll eventually get better and stuff like that. Um, it's just sometimes, you know, you don't have the time, right? So you're just like, okay, I wanted, I'll just do it in, by, my, uh, by myself if I have to. Um, but yeah, that's, I, I would 100% be willing to share like a project in the future with other people. But I do like still being, I would say, like the lead, right? Final say on a lot of things would be would be fun. Um, and I, it's interesting because in my last, in the recent video I did where it's the, the mini GG, I had uh, a non-RuneScape creator on. I had Tirzu on, who is, uh, he's like a full-time creator, but he's, he's, he does different types of videos. Um, and I was just thinking like, okay, what if I did like an entire little mini GG thing, but with like 10 bigger YouTubers who don't, do full-time runescape right and that kind of leads to something else in the future where we're doing you know I, I gg style but within like other games uh with other creators and stuff like that that's just like the the hopeful potential future that i have that mm -hmm. could be something i work on way way few, way um down the line but yeah for now i think it's just safe to to stay in the runescape space which that's, is uh cool. which is where i would prefer to stay so yeah there's obviously a lot goes through my head uh thinking about things i want to do yeah but sometimes you just have to especially you know, when you start seeing that growth it's like yeah the, the, like you're going to basically cap yourself out with just your own amount of time you can work on certain things yeah so. definitely and and the runescape scene like the runescape viewership um well, I don't think it's going down. You you do eventually want to try to hit like the general audience space on YouTube. Yeah. Like you want to yeah. bring people in who don't usually watch RuneScape stuff. Um, and that's that's when you yeah at that point you have to capitalize when that happens and be like okay let's let's keep trying to progress the content. Do you think any of the so the main OSRS YouTubers that we're talking about you know settled mm -hmm. Torvesta framed you everybody like. Who do you think is going to be the first to completely push away from OSRS? Do you do you have any like hypotheses um, on that of like who's actually going to fully take the leap into the? If main I space? had to, if I had to guess, it would be Jimmy. Uh, I think Jimmy is one like one of those creative creators in the yep. scene. 
Um, and I think he wants to do non RuneScape content quite a bit. Uh, and I think he does it really well. So I think once he has that one video just go viral and that's going to like, that's going to lead to more of his non RuneScape videos go viral. I think I would trust him, uh, the most to like continue on with that. Um, I would say Jimmy. I think Settled honestly can do whatever he wants to do and yeah. be fine. Like he could, <laughs> yeah, he could he switch. Could to, he could do Valorant content. He would be fine. Yeah. Um, I think Settled and Jimmy are are the safe answers there. You're right. uh, and I think a lot of the other creators just like RuneScape too much, so they just want to stick in the RuneScape scene. Yeah. Um, and yeah. So it's, yeah, Settled and Jimmy. It's sort of interesting because it's like you really do get pigeonholed into just being a runescape creator because yeah the, man the audience is so just particular about how they want their content like if they so it's the same thing with streaming like runescape streamers you cannot mm -hmm. just go out and start streaming other stuff because you have Dude, people that only like runescape the viewership goes down yeah i mean dramatically yeah and th that's the tough thing on youtube is if you ever upload a, a different game to your channel oh. like one the viewership drops the comments are negative like the like and dislike ratio is completely whack and then people um, are thinking like oh he's burnt or like just like yeah. the negative and they'll unsubscribe. yeah 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 it it's it's <laughs> unless you're bodhi and bodhi doesn't, yeah bodhi doesn't care like we already yeah. said yeah. but uh it is scary and it's it's it stinks because you sometimes want to be creative and come out with content that isn't runescape um but you're scared to put it out because people you know you might think people not might not like it so you never end up coming out with the video, which you know potentially could have been a banger. Um, yeah. There's been a couple of a couple of RuneScape guys though recently that have kind of broken out of the RuneScape cycle and have gone viral with other videos. I think Crum, uh, Crum RS, he has had a couple of videos go really nuclear mm. recently that were nothing to do with uh, with RuneScape. Um, there was a guy called Easyscape. He does like e speed running videos. He used to be a full time RuneScape guy. So, so it is possible, but it's hard. Like it's yeah. it's very very hard, and and a lot of people aren't willing to to make that risk, especially if I think if they already have like a decent sized subscriber base, yeah. um, and they don't want to lose that, right? They don't want to lose it, especially now with the sponsorships being really big. I mean, I would say like what eighty percent of all RuneScape videos have a sponsorship these days. Like there's yeah. so many, um, and if a sponsor sees a you know a video on your channel that performed really poorly. There's a chance, you know, they either A, don't want to work with you anymore or B, offer you less because they can say, you know, show you that the video got less views. So, yeah, that that makes it even scarier. Um, it's interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how, how it uh, how it grows and what other creators, you know, decide to leave the RuneScape scene or stick with it or do like 50 50. I know Will does con he does pretty consistent non runescape stuff on his channel yep that that's um, that's just being well thing is he started his youtube channel like that as well he was never he? okay well not like fully but you could tell like he, he didn't like just completely dominate in runescape it was clear yeah. that he was already doing variety on stream and yeah a lot of people just watch him for his personality yeah and he's got a great personality for doing different games on stream and doing different games on YouTube and stuff like yeah. that. Um, I think he does a really good job at it. So he's somebody else who I think could go, could definitely, you know, go viral in a different game and, and make the switch. But I also think he loves RuneScape a lot, so he'll never yeah. fully leave the game. Yeah, for sure. But he, he's got that great balance. There's some people I'm really envious of. Yeah. It's like, people just want to watch for you. Like, I completely, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter. It's cool. It's cool to see, like, in, his, in, in a stream highlight video of his, like, see if something happens in a game that he's playing that isn't runescape and something crazy happens and you still see his chat go crazy like because there's watching him on a different game supporting uh -huh. him that's like that's the dream that's the absolute dream yeah, for sure um this is uh just a hypothetical question if you weren't a runescape creator full-time what would you be doing oh man it's crazy, it's, especially because I, like I said, I've been around for so long that since 2010, I was like, I just want to do YouTube, like for 13 years. Uh, I went to school for broadcasting, so TV production, radio production. So I still think I would have been involved in like the film industry of some sort, um, whether it was radio, even though I didn't like radio that much. I think I preferred preferred TV production. Um, so probably something in the, in the film industry still, um, I would say. The dream as a kid was a professional athlete, as most kids probably <laughs> wanted to be. Um, Mine was an actor, even though I would an just actor. Interesting. Suck. It's just because you watch movies and you're like, that was yeah. Cool. Acting, yeah, exactly. I suck at acting. Yeah, 
but yeah, you know, you being the being the guy on the big screen exactly really cool. just doing yeah. something cool yeah exactly and actually it's kind of funny my my in my high school yearbook i had i had told myself my goal was to be in the credits of a of a movie like just be like having my name there say okay. that i worked on it <laughs> so it's kind of cool like 10 years later just being like okay well i kind of just made my own like movie slash yeah. show with gilinor games right and then like i have the rolling credits at the end with the names and everything i'm like you know what yeah i did kind of make it in a sense on youtube right so it's uh, it, it's cool to see that in a sense come true, but maybe one day I'll decide to become like I'll see if I can become like a background actor in like a TV show or a movie, just like this guy who just sits behind you know like a crowd. And you can slightly see me in the background. It's like okay, I made it right. I'm I'm random guy seven in the credits, and I'd, uh, <laughs> then I can finally fulfill that goal, right? So we'll see, we'll see. That that is actually one of the craziest things. When I th- I remember going to the movies. And particularly just looking at the ending credits, I'm like, Jesus, there is literally like a thousand so many of people. people. Like, yeah. like, why did it, you know, because I would make little home movies when I was a kid. And yep, like, yep. you know, it's always cool making the little credits, but there's like three names total. It's like you and your buddies. <laughs> yep. Just like just yeah. repeat the names over and over. Like, how do you get all of these people working on Dude. one production? It's crazy. The amount of like, yeah. The amount of things that just have to work for that kind of thing. Yeah. Like a Marvel, a Marvel movie. Oh my if you look God. at the credits are like eight minutes long, dude. Like they just Ridiculous. take forever. Absolutely. And forever. you got like the greatest talent as well on top of it. It's like just yeah, everything's working together. I, I remember I was watching. Um, I'm sure any Lord of the Rings fan has seen like they came out with a huge behind the scenes documentary on like how they made the shows. Mm-hmm. And I remember they just did an entire like 15 minute video on how three guys are making chain mail in this tent and three guys are making props in this tent. And there's one person in charge of the lighting. And then there's one person flying a helicopter to this area with the actors in it. And they have to all meet up. There has to be water being brought to them and food. I'm like, oh how is this God. all being planned, man? Like I don't, this, uh, it, so it is much money. genuinely so impressive. Much. Yeah. Just so much money. <laughs> and, and it's funny thinking about a production on like a RuneScape thing where we're just like our camera is just OBS with like recording our screen. <laughs> like we don't have to worry about like color correction on movies nope. and all that and audio balancing to an extent. But, you know, we, we can for the most part produce everything ourselves and then going to a scale like a movie and a TV show. Dude, that's it, that's absolutely crazy. crazy. Absolutely crazy. Dude. It's just Lord of the Rings in general, just to think that that came out over 20 years Dude, ago. Dude, and it holds up. It holds up so it's ins- well. If it came out today, it would still be insane. I, that movie changed. I have two Lord of the Rings tattoos. Like, it, it, it generally changed my life. Like, it was so... I watch it twice a year, minimum, the trilogy. Like Hell without yeah. Fail. Extended it's trilogy? Just, of oh, yeah, of course, yeah. extended, yeah. Just absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Like... I don't know, man. That movie just brings me to tears every time. Like, out of just the music, certain scenes in it, like it's just, it's just it's absolutely good. phenomenal. It's just, absolutely phenomenal. It's, yeah. What was, what's your Actually, favorite? What's your favorite of the three? Ah, uh, man. So, Return of the King is probably my favorite, but the um, Helm's Deep battle scene in Two Towers mm-hmm. is probably my favorite scene, like battle scene ever. Like, it was just done so well. It's like, it's like what I wanted the Game of Thrones. Um, final season battles to be like yeah i'm not sure would you watch game of thrones yeah you, yeah you watch, absolutely yeah, like, disappointed <laughs> oh yeah as as everybody is like when they when they were trying to defend winterfell like that winterfell defense scene it was just like i was like this is one of the saddest things i've ever seen um yeah, like, comparing that to the lord of the rings battles i, I was like yeah, just destroyed it absolutely destroyed it um so yeah that was uh I would say Lord Return the King, my favorite two towers, but Fellowship has a lot of charm too, man. Like you get you're introduced to all the characters yep. and you get to see sexy Aragorn for the first time mm. and all the hobbits and everything. So good. I actually embarrassingly, I'll admit this, I actually just watched Rings of Power from Amazon because I was really scared to watch it because I was like, what if I hope this isn't ruined like Lord of the Rings for me? Uh, and I hope it's not going to be bad. And I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed it. I okay. think you go in with, with I haven't low expectations. It. I think you go in with low expectations, and you'll be pleasantly surprised. Okay. Like you just you just can't expect it to be a Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings movie, right? It just it's just it's not going to come close. What are your thoughts on the Hobbits videos? So when it movies? first came out, I like I didn't. I was like, ah, these just don't compare. And then yeah. I also did a rewatch recently where I, I just went in low expectations, and I enjoyed them. Man, they're charming in their own sense. There's okay. a lot of things that are like the CGI in certain scenes, and like 
it fit some of the, the stuff definitely felt rushed, but charming in their own way. To be honest with you, I just love the Lord of the Rings universe. Okay. So just to have content come out where you can, you know, put names to faces and or faces to names. Yeah, I'm one of the two. Um, and just have like more of the lore explained in, in you know, movie and TV form it, it is cool in general. So, yeah, I'll always, I'll always be happy about it. Yeah, that uh, it just sucks when you make something so incredible that like nothing can yeah. ever like just match up to it. Th- it's see, just a that, high standard. That that's the problem with Star Wars. I, or, like, are you a fan of Star Wars? Massive fan of the original. Yeah, yeah, like huge fan. I I love even like you know episodes one, two, and three, like the newer ones. Um, yeah. But man, I'm just not a fan of seven, eight, nine. Like, no. Nah. Me it, neither. It's just, they're like too, like, even though it's still in the Star Wars universe, it's like, there's just something missing. It's just not like, I don't know. It's just something where there's like not as many, there's not enough twists. Like, there's not enough, like, depth going on. It just feels like everything's really surface level. It's just nothing, like, you. it's just very, like, you know what's going to happen, kind of. Yeah, and I think I think it's just, it also suffers from the, just the originals just being so good. It's like, true. It, it's it's true. like, you just can't, you can't live up to them. Um, yeah. I think, you know, seven, eight, nine have good things in their, in their own aspects. And I think some stuff, it's cool to see like Han and Leia and, and Luke and like yeah. their older, older ages and stuff like that. But yeah, nothing will compare to, you know, to the, the to four, five, six. So, yeah. yeah. Totally. One, two, three were okay too. I, I, I didn't, I didn't mind them either. I think um, one of the things that just makes me really love, well, first of all, one, two, and three is like me as a kid. It's like I just have a nostalgia with it. Yeah. So on oh, top of nostalgia that, nostalgia is huge. Yeah. But as well, like I just remember like reading the deep lore about like how Jar Jar was actually the Sith Lord, like was supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. Like that shit excites me. Like I wish they would have done. Like I wish they would have gone down the route that like nobody would expect. Almost. Yeah. Just something like holy shit! Like Jar Jar had you guys in the palm of his hands. Yeah. I'm really, I'm really curious to see in like 30, 40 years, once we're like mega old and still playing RuneScape, mm-hmm. um, if they like start recreating like some of the, like what if, what if somebody just decides to recreate like Game of Thrones and like actually end dude, it well? Dude, okay. or I'm sorry, I, I need to interrupt. No, it's like Game yeah. of Thrones. I am the the thing that just intrigued me with the show was the throne. Like, who is yeah. going to sit on the throne at the end? Like, that's what I I didn't even really care that much about the the whites yeah. or whatever. That were just it's more like fantasy. It's like I really just care about the politicalness yeah. of this all. That Love was it. the fascinating part. And dude, the fact that Littlefinger just got dominated pissed me off so much. That dude was dude. a madman, and he would have he should have sat the throne at the end. Like, I yeah. was just praying for that theory anybody but brand dude anybody but brand I same with Var- varus varus was done so dirty too i i know mm-hmm. he was he was so so smart same with, even Tyrion was just like i don't think Tyrion should have been on the throne but i think they like dumbed down his character i know so much they the dumbed season. people down and then they dumbed and him then, down so much and then you have Jon snow that can do no wrong and for some yeah. odd reason like literally kills Daenerys and for some yeah. reason everyone's like just okay with it like we're just gonna lock you yeah. up and call your family to come over here and you get figure sent things. To like, what is wall. happening it's like this like, is the worst I, I like I said it it's it makes me sad thinking about it that show was so good too. it was so it's, promising it's crazy how much support you would see it everywhere every time an episode came out right and since it ended I feel like there's nothing there's like I see nothing about Game of Thrones ever yeah. Uh, it, it, it's never brought up just because of how shitty the ending was. It's 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 sad, man. It's genuine. I can't believe it happened. I can't believe it. It's are you so sad? Are you a fan of Breaking Bad? Yeah, yeah. I uh, love did, Breaking Bad. Did you watch Better Call Saul as well? I watched Better Call Saul too. Yeah. What 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 what's your uh, favorite of, of those two? Um, I really liked the storytelling in Better Call Saul. Yeah. But tell you what heisenberg is just such yeah. a good character dude <laughs> in breaking know. bad like walter white is just he is just on and jesse and two in that show they are just yeah. such a good duo i have to say breaking bad definitely okay. but i really like saul's character in better call saul i wasn't like the biggest fan of the final season to be honest with you in better it, call saul dude the problem with the so i'm still actually more of a fan of better call saul only just because okay. i think the story is just slightly better but don't get me wrong they're like on par with each other but you mm-hmm. know what bothered me is they changed the goddamn actor. Yeah, um, the actor. What was yeah. that? What was that, I don't know that, what happened dude? with that. I don't know what happened. Yeah. I also, like, 
he, so they did a lot of black and white episodes yeah. um, in the final season, and I didn't, like, dislike them. And I get they were showing that that's, like, happening in a different time mm-hmm. and in a different place, but I was like, man, I really miss color at this point. <laughs> like, the, mm-hmm. the, the black and white was interesting to try to get through. Um, but... You can't, you can't, it's Vince Gilligan, okay? You got to trust yeah, what he, what he yeah. does. Like, you, you got to trust him. Um, I tell you what, though, the the better, co- the moment, I'll just, no, I guess, spoiler alert, yeah. alert at this point, but when, when Lalo shoots Howard, yeah. that, that, I have not had a mouth drop like that in so long. Like, I genuinely, like, my ha- my hands were on my head. I was like, oh, my God. Dude. Like, did that, I, that was one of the greatest ever, like, twist for me ever like that was absolutely crazy it so I, I, that is that's the number one moment for me in both shows to be honest with you are, are those is, is that moment right there bro it was so good so good howard was done so dirty like the dude was so? just genuinely a decent dude it just so got dirty. screwed over so hard dude uh <sighs> kim uh kim and just playing around with him uh you know, they were just like, they messed around with his life so much. And then it oh, ends in that. Man. And then the worst part afterwards is they like, they say he was on like a cocaine, like fuel, I, I don't know, know ride oh and he God. crashed. It. Like, dude, it, crazy. <laughs> he was done so dirty. So it, dirty. it was just so like every episode was just so suspenseful. I loved it. The, the yeah. it, it even wrapped up really nicely. I actually like how it wrapped up. Same. I like, I liked the end too. Yeah. yeah. But man, I think the biggest thing was like you said, like those black and white episodes, just it, there wasn't enough, like it, the, the actor change honestly was like the biggest upset for me mm. was just like, dude, this dude was scary. Like this dude, yeah. this dude was supposed to be like, kind of like oh shit like what's gonna happen next like the first few seasons when you're showing those black and whites i'm like oh, jesus like this is gonna be yeah. really exciting when we get to see this and it was just like yeah. kind of dull yeah exactly that's um i i but it is an amazing show either way and i yeah. i'm still waiting for uh another show to come out that's gonna that's gonna grip me like uh like those two that yeah. i think i think that universe is probably done now but yeah i still enjoyed it a lot so for sure okay um Soup, I want to ask you for three shout outs before we wrap things up. Okay. Uh, yeah. Three shout outs. Yeah, three shout outs. Anybody in the community, um, whether they be content creators or just people that have helped you along the way. Okay. I want to think about this really quick. Yeah, go for it. Um, who do we want to shout out? Um, I want to give a shout out to a girl called Allie. She has helped me tremendously with Gilinar Games, uh, with the behind the scenes and product and like planning and, and editing and all that. So I'm gonna give her a big shout out. Um, gonna give a big shout out to all the creators who have been on Gilinar Games. I'm not, I'm not gonna we'll single anybody together, out. Yeah. I'm gonna group all like I think we're up to like I don't even know like 30 or 40 people who have been on GG at this point. Um, which is uh, and anybody who's you know they've all made time to to be on the show and they've all made time to. Um, to be on the episodes and and they've all formed characters and 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 just been vital to the to the su- success of the show. Um, and then I can, I'm also going to group all the viewers together and give a big shout out to all the viewers <laughs> who support not only my content uh, but uh, you know all the other creators' content as well. I'll find a name here really quick. Let me think of one person. I'm going to do four shout outs if that's yeah. cool. I will give a shout out to. Do, 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 do. I'll give a shout out to Brian. My uh, my good friend, huge Brian. He'll see this. He'll know who he is when I say this out loud. But shout out Brian and his dog. Love you guys. How do you? You know, you asked me about you know how I choose people. How do you go about choosing people for the Save a Cast? Um. Okay. So when I first started the cast, really, what it was about was just trying to. I just wanted to talk to people about the game because I was really addicted at the time, and yep. I just wanted to hear people's opinions on basically everything revolved in the game and of course i was a really high level iron man so it just it was kind of like just a really niche thing that i really didn't expect it to really go anywhere it was just like i'm mm-hmm. gonna do this here and there but then it just ended up like okay i'll just do this every week i'll try to get a guest on i got some j mods on and then yeah i think <sighs> there was a point where i st- uh, everything was enjoyable because i was deciding the guests i chose and then there came a point where i actually started getting stressed out about episodes and it was because there was all of a sudden this pressure from the community to like get certain people on like oh you got to get this person on you got to get this person like people i hadn't even heard of Mm -hmm. and of course i want to get to know people but that pressure ended up stressing me out to the point where i was like 
kind of not even wanting to do the podcast anymore because it was just like uh like i i'd rather talk to this person but there's so much pressure mm. to get this person on and so basically about uh i don't know a year and a half ago i just decided you know what i'm gonna just talk to who i want to talk to i'm gonna try to branch out as much as possible because that's what's made this really fun but i'm not gonna take external pressures and have people like you need to get this person on, you need to get this person on like but i love the suggestions of course but i think what's made it really nice for me is just me getting the full freedom to just choose who i want repeat guests even and yeah that's what's made it fun so yeah just suggestions are nice but at the end of the day it's me deciding each week who i want to have on Gotcha. 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 Yeah. It's always, it's always, uh, I, I understand the whole, like you're saying, it's cool. You can relate to the pressure of like people being like, Oh, you should have this person on or, Oh, you should have, you should have this person yeah. on a lot of the times when, uh, you know, when people ask, or oh, why didn't you have this person on? It's like, sometimes they don't know that they were actually asked. They just weren't able to be on and couldn't mm -hmm. be on at that time. Right. So then you feel bad because you want to have them on, but they couldn't make it and stuff like that. And then you feel pressure for the next time. I can uh, I can also relate to that, so I get that. Interesting to know, though. Interesting. I'm sure. Um, and the cool thing for you is that there's like no. Sh I think I said this earlier, but there's no shortage of people to talk there to. Really in isn't. Team. Yeah. Um, so you're gonna have conversations on conversations. You're up. To, what what number am I? 120. You said. 129. 129. That is yeah. absolutely insane. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Road to thousand, dude. Yeah. We're gonna we'll get there eventually. Yeah. It's only, it's only gonna yeah. take twenty years if I do one. Oh, well, to be honest, twenty I've, years. I've been I've been doing on average one a week, but there you I'm go. actually starting to. Uh, I'm considering picking that up and starting to maybe even push for like six a month, maybe even mm -hmm. seven or eight a month, depending. Just because yeah. I love it so much, and this is actually what gives me the most fulfillment in yeah. where I'm at. So. Yeah, and people love them too. Uh, you know, test it out, see how it goes. Obviously, if it's too much, it's too much. Exactly. But I have to... maybe one month you'll be motivated, one month you won't be. Who knows? Yeah. But uh, it'll be fun either way. Yeah, man, I had, a, I had a super good time talking with you. Thank you very much for having me on. Yeah, uh, I really do appreciate your time. So those listening, uh, after all this time, if you if you made it all the way, type uh, type uh, let's see, Peach in the comments, and let's we'll Ooh. see who made it the whole way. <laughs> but <Love> uh, <laughs> down in the comments, guys go or not in the comments down in the description you guys can follow soup on his youtube do you want me to link your twitch do you have any plans of streaming no plans on streaming at the moment okay. so just the youtube would be awesome youtube and i'll have your twitter on there as well if you cool if we'll follow. do that too cool yeah. uh soup thank you once again this is no an problem man. pleasure i love talking with you but thank you very much hell yeah all right guys we'll catch you in the next one peace peace